you will thank me later on. It's a kind of 50s doo wop, but all satanic. Satanic 50s doo wop? Yeah. And it's called Twin Temple. Are they are they British? Are they American? What's going on? Hey, I, I want to say they're American because it sounds like something that would only come from the mind of an American. Uh, I think they're just a two piece. Um, but yeah, it's like a like proper. Do you imagine uh, if Amy Winehouse was a Satanist? That's what it sounds like. It's really fucking good. And with that, welcome to another episode. <laughs> Of Duncan and Bo slash fiction. A tiny little division of Duncan and Bo come correct. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have the technology to trick you into opening the show, Duncan. Yes. Um, Every time. Every time. You know, next time I'm just going to be quiet. I know it's going to be a difficult thing to do, but I'll just be like, "Mm, mm, mm." you have no choice. What it is, is I I give you the perfect setup to to say the dumb shit you like to say anyway. <laughs> that perfect setup is high. Right. I'm like, yes, I am the uh uh Bud Abbott to your Lou Costello in so many ways. I see what you did there, and I will not dispute it. All right. Well, hey, uh folks, thanks uh for joining us live, those of you who are with us. Uh and thanks for listening to the show, those of you listening to the the audio podcast. Um so Yes, we love you. We haven't forgotten about you. I know we're talking about all the people that are here live a lot but you were our first love I, we did dirty things to you i brushed right over it and then you had to slam the brakes on it and make everybody <laughs> feel awkward all of a sudden <laughs> you're welcome that is my it's, gift it's the the real turn the punch bowl um <laughs> so the uh, like i said this duck and bow cup correct uh this season we are looking at episode uh or uh, i'm sorry uh this season we are looking at the series slasher and mm-hmm. we've made our way to episode three um which as we were talking about just before the show features the untimely death of easily the best character on the show so far and it's a yeah. real bummer first they give us then they take it away bo. god you sound like one of the show titles good lord <laughs> good lord no no, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, as pretentious as i could possibly get even on my best day it, it, you know, doesn't hold a candle to the the pretentious shit that they have leveled at our door with the the episode. Titles yeah, here. I can't uh, the, believe the, this yeah. is only episode three. <laughs> yeah, and the title of this episode is "Like as Fire Eateth Up and Burneth Wood." It yeah. sounds like Puritan, like devil poetry. Why are we making this so <laughs> elaborate? Uh, <laughs> also, also like a really, really posh biblical way for going for a shit after a curry <laughs> yeah yeah by the way uh, uh, uh all, slightly off topic had an amazing chicken masala recently nice yeah yeah you know and had a little bit of that sauce left over and used it on mm-hmm. some of my other chicken was like, <laughs> no no this is just fine <laughs> I'm a masala recycler, <laughs> and and I have no. You know what's you it. know what's a good curry when a couple of days afterwards you're telling people about it. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> really good. It was really good. It like it it had a it had just the right bite to it, but it was really rich mm. and oh, just amazing. Anyway, uh, <laughs> that's look curry talk is our other show. We'll get into yes, that another the time. Legion podcast curry talk with Duncan Correct. and Bo. It's there's only four listeners. But they are devoted. <laughs> and t- two of them are Duncan and Bull. Yeah, well, yeah, two others. But uh, again, super, super fans. Um, yes. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> when are you going to get the Tika episode out, they say. <laughs> they keep saying, and I keep saying to them, the more you want it, the less you'll get it. Just be patient. Right. Uh, Can't rush these things. <laughs> but what what we really do to start the show, Duncan is mm-hmm. we talk about movies that we've been watching one good one bad you know let's yes. keep, let's keep it contained um and you know i gotta say all right uh, do you want to go first uh, yeah because i have a good and a bad this week which will be the first time this year that okay. i have something pretty terrible and the Ooh. source of said terrible thing might surprise you <laughs> so. oh well now i am intrigued <laughs> so I will I will leave it to you whether you want me to start with my good or my bad. 
you know what? This is a real, like, give me the good news last. Uh, what's your good movie? And then let's get to the delightful bad movie. <laughs> So the good movie uh, is one that I got a chance to see, I got a screener of, it's available now in the States as of the 15th of January, on demand and digital, it is a thriller, kind of family drama thriller called um, Don't Tell a Soul, I've just released an episode on it on podcast under the stairs, so you can go across and listen to me chat to the director for about half an hour, bloody nice guy, um, but essentially the setup for this movie is ill mother, two teenage sons rising costs of prescription bills. The two teenage sons rob a house close by. And this is all like first 15 minute stuff. And as they're escaping with the cash, um, a security man spots them, chases after them. They run through the woods and the security man falls down uh, like, like some sort of hole in the ground, um, like left over from something. Uh, but it's quite a deep hole he falls down. Uh, older brother thinks he should just leave him uh because he's a bit more of the renegade younger brother um has a real daddy complex and that his dad died when he was young kind of feels like he should save him and the mystery unfolds from there although there is a wicked twist in the middle which i genuinely loved um it's got a great cast it's got uh the young dude uh from the it movies the one that played eddie you know the one with the inhaler i do yeah so him um it has Mina Savari and uh you know I can't believe you're doing this role because you're a very attractive lady and you're playing a very ill mother of two teenage boys which I don't think you're old enough to have um or maybe she is now, yeah, Mina uh, Savari is like she was young at American Beauty now she's yeah. middle aged now yeah she, <laughs> she just she's she has a baby age. face is the thing yeah, but I thought she was my age in American Beauty. Like, when I watched that movie, I thought she was, like, the same age as me. So I thought she was about 18. When well, she I'll tell movie. you what. I'll get to the bottom of this. You continue. You find out how old I, she actually right. is. She doesn't feel like she should have a 17-year-old son. Real-time fact-checking right here on <laughs> Duncan and Boke, I'm correct. So, yeah, but the, it. The, the security officer that falls down the hole is played by a certain Rain Wilson, who is fucking brilliant in this um because it's a darker thriller sort of role and he's very 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 good in it um yeah i thought this one was was a ton of fun i think the ending goes in a direction which i from reading online infuriated a few people i thought it was all right i thought it was a bit cheesy um but i was invested in everything else i think the casting and the script are, are, are really 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 well done um and yeah just a nice self-contained thriller which isn't involving the world being blowing blown up or you know some sort of government conspiracy you know just a good old-fashioned kids with a morality problem um and i thought i thought it paid off very 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 well so yeah it's available if you're in the states you rent it uh, it's on demand and digital 15th of january uh, i think it's coming its way over to the uk he said about six months so i would imagine june July uh, over here. But yeah, um, uh, go check the trailer. That's I, I asked the guy, he asked the director via the Twitter, he said, nope, don't use Twitter, don't use Facebook, don't use any of that stuff. I was like, so where should I point the moves like that? The trailer. <laughs> I was like, you've Great. done this before. Um, so <laughs> it's like, send them to the trailer, get them to watch the movie. And uh, yeah, it has it has my seal of approval. Uh, I thought it was, I thought it was a, a fun movie for sure. So that's my I good. All right, so real-time fact-checking, as yes. promised. Mina Savari, uh, currently 41 years of age, was 20 oh, years old yeah. when she recorded, uh, or not recorded, when she uh, was in Made American, American Beauty. Yeah. All right, so if she's 40, she could conceivably have like a 17-year-old son. Absolutely, that's 23. Yeah. If, yep. if she was born in Georgia, she could have like eight kids by now. <laughs> a shot a, ca a Catholic in <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> I didn't even I didn't even hear you load that gun bow. Um so <laughs> <just> fucking... <laughs> Yeah. I mean, look, we can move the state. Arkansas, is that better for you? Florida? We're like we'll take a tour of the South. <laughs> a Catholic another, in Louisiana, like, how about that? She's got another um she must be like her agent must be getting her lots of work at the moment or she just made a lot of movies and this is I'm finally seeing the, the light of day. She's got another kind of horror thriller movie coming out that I just got uh, press stuff through from as well. Um, I was just like, I haven't, I couldn't remember the last time I'd seen her in anything. 
for like two roles to appear pretty much side by side uh, felt interesting, especially when they're both kind of not in the genre I would usually put her as an actress. So she's really good in Stuck, that Stuart Gordon, way under scene. Yes. That's a great movie. Yes. And she is great in it. Um, also, uh, <laughs> JJ in the more. chat. <laughs> I was going to say Ian Dunsmore, who is a, a, a listener of the old podcast under the stairs, said if she was from Grangemouth, which is where I used to live, uh, she'd be a granny at 33. <laughs> yeah, right. So, yeah, JJ also tried to, like, you know, hey, I'm from Georgia. Yeah, well, I'm like, yeah, well, I was about to say. <laughs> like I said, could have been any southern state. Tennessee, I'm from Tennessee, could have been from here. You go. Also, we have a promise to make, we have a promise to keep here. We love you, Jamie. Absolutely. Love you. Oh my goodness. Like I said, you, everybody here is a little bit better for having Jamie with us at, at the same time. It's She'll be returning real soon to podcast under the stairs when we do our second installment of the E24 series. And I'm just going to say it, Bo, not a lot of good movies in that selection. Eh. Eh. All right. Well, look, some that's a, some horror movie called Hereditary. I don't think I've seen right. before. Right. Uh, you, you, I'll tell you the one. I'm, uh, all right. Look, we'll we'll get to the oh, the whole slasher oh, thing in a minute, folks. Just calm oh. down. Um, you just hold your horses. <laughs> just give us a minute. Uh, I'm really looking uh, forward to revisiting. Um, uh, it comes at night. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, I remember watching and thinking like, "Oh, that's totally not what I expected it to be," but it was it was interesting. And I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to to watching it again with uh, more measured expectations of what that movie really is. Cool, um, yeah, yeah. So, because I uh, anyway, uh, well, that's a, a conversation. We, we, we'll get to show, yeah, but we, we'll get that. But uh, but folks, be sure you're uh, you know paying attention to the podcast down the stairs for that. Um, Which you're good. Come on, hit me with. Okay, my good is going to be Psycho Goreman. Yes, Go Uh I, I looked at everything I watched, and that was the thing I was most excited about. That movie was a fucking delight cover to cover. I told enjoyed you, it. Told you. Uh, I enjoyed it so much. It's one of those movies because it's like, look, this isn't a classic of cinema, but mm -hmm. it is such a great silly homage to, like, like, I think I described it as, like, the Power Rangers after an eight ball. You know, it's as total as the it's the. Did you grow up watching Power Rangers? Have you ever seen that Guyver movie? You know what? You like Psycho Gorman, and yes, yep. yes, yes, I really, really, really did. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad. I, I've seen a lot of kind of seems. I didn't think a movie like this would be polarizing per se, but turns out if you're a big fan of that, The Void, which I know me and you were kind of eh, on, um, it turns out you don't want that director to make a silly, gory movie which makes no sense because if you're a fan of Astron 6 and their oeuvre, then you totally want this movie. Because <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what they do. <laughs> so I don't get it. Um, so much fun, though. Do, do, do you like hunky men, Bo? <laughs> um, no, I do not like hunky boys. Or do I? Or do I? <laughs> that... <laughs> The the uh, the guy who does... I can't think of his name now, but the guy who does the voice acting for pg in the movie it's yeah. so good it is so deadpan and he never mm -hmm. breaks character it's always i am the evil overlord of the universe all the way through it <laughs> right and no matter how silly what he is saying is it's all in the tone of overlord of the universe and it's just fucking beautiful it is yes. uh the character of mimi is such an evil evil little shit i i yeah <laughs> I love the way that the movie goes out of its way to tell you, like, hey, nobody learned a lesson from anything here, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, would nobody, you know, maybe the power of love, question mark with a shrug, you know? <laughs> and that's, maybe. But, but, like, yeah, <laughs> maybe. But the world <laughs> around him is fucked. And yeah. that's the thing that's most wonderful about it is like, again, nobody learns any lessons. It's all purely selfish indulgences from beginning of the movie to the end. It's I mean, the thing the thing I'd like when I was speaking to the, the director, the thing that I applauded him on is the, is the silly world building. Like you're just introduced to a lot of characters and the, the reflex that I think a lot of people might try and do is give more context to these characters. Like you, you, like you meet a, like an intergalactic consortium or council 
of alien, but they don't explain anything about anyone. You're just flung in the middle of it, yeah, and they're all yeah. pretty shitty as well. I, I just like that sort of stuff. Just makes me happy. I, I think it's pitched perfectly, and genuinely, if you're looking for a movie to cheer you up at the start of what what has been, let's be honest, January's been pretty dull. Um, like all that good stuff we were going to get, which we were never going to get, has not happened. Um, it's it's a great pick me up. It's it's a great way to to kind of jump into the year and i would say as well i know there's some people out there that are they're holding off for the physical release which is march um, and some people might even be holding off for the shutter release which is may um if you i would still say if you've got some spare money around buy it on digital as well i i, I genuinely want to see him make more movies and the best way to do that because a lot of his revenue did not happen last year because of covid he was supposed to do all these festivals which didn't happen so the best way to show that is swing out a couple of bucks watch it digital buy a physical one if you like it and then watch it when it comes on shutter as well i stress that even if you own it watch it when it comes on shutter because those are markers that you know indicate to the people that run that streaming site whether or not titles are popular or not so um yeah so do all that support it is it is so much fun you're doing yourself a disservice by not one checking it out or two not supporting it so yeah i couldn't agree more you know vote with your dollars uh it is worth every penny it's wonderful that 5.99 nice. totally worth it um okay so uh What's your uh, what's your bad, Duncan? I'm very excited about this now. <laughs> uh, well, not to put a pin in anyone's uh, anyone's balloon here, who was excited and waiting for the new Neil Marshall movie, The Reckoning. Oh, uh, FYI, that movie piece of shit, uh, like really fucking bad. Like to the point where I'm like, did Neil Marshall direct this movie, or is it? Did I get this wrong? Is there another Neil Marshall out there? Um, this is bad. Like bad, bad. Um, the movie. The movie is set during the time period of kind of Witchfinder General, in in England. Um, there is a weird plague sweeping the countryside, and through an abuse of power, um, the young maiden loses her husband, and uh, because she will not bed the the landowner to get out of paying the the back rent that's due on the property as happens um which which happens um she essentially is is uh brought up on uh, charges of witchcraft at which time sean pertwee who i like <laughs> like <laughs> like appears wearing like <laughs> the poor man sean uh, bean yes if, if you imagine like eddie murphy and delirious or raw with the leather suit now imagine it a bit puffier and black. <laughs> That's what he's wearing. Hang on, and Duncan. Show... Let me show you what I think you mean. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> this old number. Um, right. Yep. I call this so, the Wednesday. <laughs> so, like, he shows up and um, starts starts basically putting her through the tortures of the witch trials. Um, the movie has some issues. <laughs> The first big issue is the dialogue is horrific, like absolutely horrific, just not well done, not well constructed. Characters don't speak like, at times it's like they're going for that kind of ye olde English and then the next sentence are two steps away from like talking about iPhones, not quite, but you get the point. It's, there's a disconnect in, the, in the, the kind of dialogue. No matter what happens to this leading lady, her makeup, which is like 2020s, perfect makeup like the like just always immaculately done never changes like she's always immaculate uh which makes zero fucking sense and then the continuity there's like she a uh, one scene she goes through it's like a hundred lashes on her back and her back's all torn up and then we see her like she's brought and then flung in a, like a prison cell and there's not a scratch on her back and it's not under the guise of witchcraft um, or anything like that. She's like, she's hobbled, but she walks fine after it. Just like fucking no fucks given on this movie, front to back. And it's just painfully dull. 
above all else. And this is Neil Marshall. This is the guy who did The Descent, Dog Soldiers, Doomsday, has, you know, he did that Hellboy movie, which I wasn't overly enamoured with, but still it was a big action number. This is a director that can, he directed most of the big action episodes of Game of Thrones. And it is awful. Like, just, just bad, a bad, bad, bad movie. And not so bad that I'd be like, it's so bad, so watch it. No, it's just bad. And I can't I can't work out what's going on. Um, if I was him, I would be very quiet that I'd made this movie. Uh, but all the sites are getting very excited about it. So it's up to you, ultimately, to make your, your own mind up on this. But I'm, I'm telling you right now, you're going to go in there with expectations and those expectations will never be met. It is, it's the worst horror movie I've seen this year. Wow. Wow. So there you go. Yeah, Neil Marshall, the worst horror movie I've seen this year. It is very young, but if I told you um, January 1st, oh, by the way, by the end of this first month, the worst horror movie that I, that I saw was directed by the great Neil Marshall, would you believe that? I mean, that's right. the thing that's kind of floored me is how just un, unremarkable and unlike his his oeuvre it actually is. Um, it's just not it's just not good. And um, sadly, I have been pressing, <laughs> I was pressing for a copy of this and also for an interview. And then I watched the movie and I'm like, I really hope this comes, because I still really want to chat to Neil Marshall. But sure. if he asks me what, I, I'm not good at lying, bro. If he asks me what I think he's movie, I'll, the words disappointed are going to come out. So I'm trying to work on different tactics, like talking about how great the descent is. You know, just pivot to the descent. You know, there's a cave in one sequence, like that cave in the descent. Let's talk about that for the 15 minutes that I have you before you jump on to your next <laughs> interview. Uh, like that we politicians do when they're asked a question and they know they only have five minutes, so they'll talk about anything else or elongate the answer as a series of nothings to get through those five minutes so the, they can get away from the, that's That might be what I have to do. In seeing your movie, I thought that the uh, cinematic qualities of the film were uh, were obvious and how yeah. <laughs> it, uh, you know, the sound played such a big role in, in the way people spoke and the music, you know. <laughs> Me like, and the, I, I was recording with our buddy Richard Glenn Smith earlier on. And uh, we were talking about this very thing, not Neil Marshall, but talking about movies, which you, like you, if a person says, well, this movie's interesting, that's never a good sign. Uh, but what he'd say, he said is that their code for that on the Doom show is that they say, you know, the movie... Uh, feels personal. So this, this was this movie feels personal, and I was like, that yeah, it's the it's the two steps away from saying, well, this movie was a real passion project for the director, as in couldn't finance it because no one wanted to finance it, no one wanted to make it except this guy, and no one wants to see it except that director. Um, so it's that it's it's on that level, and I can't even imagine. I just I struggle to to bring the two things together. It's such a draw. It's such. A huge drop in quality and this is his return back to the genre like uh, he's been away a for a while so it just is not is not a good movie um and i defy like i i want to speak to someone who has seen it and thinks it's really good because i just don't see any merit in it at all look here's the here's the thing though you know you're talking to duncan mcleish you're getting the straight dope so <laughs> that's what i appreciate no bullshit <laughs> Yeah, I, I like look, that's. I would much rather spend my my hours exalting the, the 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 fun and positivity and everything that radiates out of PG than try to hype up a movie that is going to get a lot more hype. Like Neil Marshall's name against, I guarantee every publication is going to hype this one up a hundred times more than they did PG. Um, and I just don't think that's fair. I think one clearly is made by a filmmaker who loves his craft um is invested in telling the story and wants the audience to have fun and the other one is made by someone who was clearly asleep at the wheel who's doing it maybe because it's the only way he can finance a movie but his heart didn't feel in it at all so um what's your bad bull rans though come on let's yeah, even out I, the negativity hey, here. Uh, speaking of of a pivot away from negativity let me just say hmm. when you mention witchfinder general and and you know continuing with our theme of kind of filleting uh shutter a yes. little bit um yes 
that uh, they just dropped uh, the blood on Satan's claw on oh, US Shutter, so good, which is kind of so it was kind of tough to find before, mm-hmm. and uh, so having that on there, I watched it again just the other day, and I was like, this movie's real fucking good. Um, uh, yeah, terrific movie. I like I like it more than Witchfinder in general. I think I think I think well, it's one of the goes, big three. Yeah, it, it goes it's one Wicker of the big Man, three in Folk Horror. Yeah, it's Wicker Man, Satan's Claw. And Witchfinder General. And Witchfinder General. Are the three, yeah. yeah, the big three of folk, they're, they're they're considered the big three of folk horror, and that those movies came out. Well, I think it's like two, two, three years apart, um, and essentially solidified that as a a genre, so to speak. Even yeah. though folk horror predates that, and, and like Scandinavia were doing movies, uh, Sweden and Norway had been doing folk horror for for. A, a while before, but that was the one that they they used to the English country say. And like Witchfinder General is maybe my favorite Vincent Price performance. It's like real there's good. something really menacingly gleeful about how he, you know, how he portrays that role. Even though, once again, to put things in a perspective here, like the, that's another thing that annoyed people. Ah, oh, the negativity. Like people did not live to have grey hair back then. Maybe one or two people did. There's a lot of old people. And and fucking the reckoning, and that just didn't make sense. Like Matthew Hopkins in real life, when Vincent Price is playing that character, was twenty two years old, and Vincent Price is not twenty two years old. <laughs> I I can't tell you how much I like that. Your problem with the movie is like, wait a second, all of these people would be dead by now. Well, that, that's a big continuity thing I, for me. Like I'm not disagreeing, you know what is, but I like it. Robert Eggers has spoiled me in which movies. True. Yeah. No. Robert Eggers is. But, he has you know. me on it because he got every, everything. The detail was immaculate. Even when we were chatting, remember when we were chatting with, with Jamie and Jamie was like that. The first thing that she saw was hand stitched clothing, and she was in. She's like, "Oh, they give a fuck about this." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, honestly, you watch this movie, and every time this leading actress turns around, it looks like she's walked into either a fucking Maybelline counter a department store or she's sponsored by sephoria as honestly as like you've never seen makeup it's just immaculate all the time like she's just been fucking brutalized and then next scene she's sitting there immaculate <laughs> she's fucking shite um uh... all right all right so i'll give you my bad but but first real quick uh laurie from chat w- uh, was throwing in the you know those euphemisms you use when you're watching something terrible and uh, yes. she says for for theater situations, it's everyone must have worked really hard on this. <laughs> and that's a really good one. Like, oh, yeah, you can see that. Yeah, they really I mean, it's borderline unwatchable, but it looks <laughs> like they somebody was working. Yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, so my my bad and I want troubled re- shoot. Troubled shoot's a good one as well. For when a movie's sure. just a fucking mess. Yeah. Oh, it was, you know, I, I think this was a troubled shit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> AKA the director did not know what the fuck he was doing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the studio had far too much involvement. You know what I mean? Like he's yeah. a patchwork. Oh um, man. Right. Give me your bad. Give me your bad. Okay. So, uh, I really, I've watched mostly really, really good, interesting stuff of late. Ooh, look at um, me. I'm Bo and I only watch quality. <laughs> gone are yeah. the days of the Ouija factory oh, seven. Don't kid yourself. They're not gone. Duncan. Uh, it's just, I, I, there was one I saw the other day called like Ouija Sasquatch. And I was like, oh, sir. Oh, oh, oh well, what have we here? <laughs> so then I saw That's a future commentary. That's a future commentary. It, it, it That's was a money plane commentary. I'm almost Ouija sure Sasquatch. it was on Amazon prime and it was only like an hour and six minutes long or something. Oh, so that's dude. why I was like, oh, uh, I mean, that sounds even too shitty for me, but I'll see it someday. Um, but we'll do we'll do a commentary on it, okay. My, and hopefully Kelsey Grammer plays the Sasquatch. Let me I'll, again. I'll have to confirm that the, it's Ouija Bigfoot or Ouija Sasquatch. One of the two. I Doesn't want matter, it to be both are amazing. <laughs> uh, in my head, Sasquatch sounds more official somehow. Like that sounds more like <laughs> like if you were gonna work in here, they they know the real name of the cryptid. <laughs> right, right. Like if you had a Ouija board and were trying to summon. Uh, would you be like, I, I we summoned the spirit of Bigfoot? It sounds yeah. a little stupid, but when you say 
I, I mean, well, maybe it sounds stupid both ways, Duncan. I'm not going to argue this, but is it going to be like a, like see when they have to do the the ultimate exorcism to get rid of the spirit of Bigfoot? Are they going to use the Harry and the Hendersons? Get off! Get out of here! We don't love you anymore, <laughs> Harry. They get a priest to come in and say that. <laughs> get out of here, Sasquatch! Nobody wants you anymore. Who's, who's, who's in that role again? Who plays John that Lithgow. guy? Yeah, let's get John. Yeah, let's get John Lithgow. He's still alive. Like, yeah, <laughs> and, and he does it. weird enough shit that I think he might be game for it. <laughs> you know, go <laughs> here, acting. Um, so <laughs> anyway, that's for your future episode. But uh, yeah. what <laughs> what I watched that was bad. Uh, I I recently rewatched all of those uh, Christopher Nolan Batman movies. And, oh, nice. And I gotta say, man, I think that Dark Knight Rises is just kind of a shitty movie. Uh, it's right, a real Donnie, What one's that one? Is that the third one? Yeah, that's the one with Bane, and there's uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt running all over that movie that doesn't really amount to much. And ah, oh, well, I think it's mm, I think it was set up to be something that didn't happen, wasn't it? Was yeah, it supposed the, to be future Batman or something. I can't remember. Perhaps it it, it all just felt a little like everything about the movie felt like it was contractually obligated as mm. opposed to actually being a, like, I love the dark Knight. Well, ironically dark Knight, one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's incredible. I, I, yeah. It makes you, it makes you, I don't know how much of that movie is a hangover from the fact that Heath Ledger took his life. Right. Right. You know, you don't know, like, I, I imagine just like what Nolan's like, I imagine there there was a, a distinct idea of what was supposed to be there. Um, Bane is not a captivating villain. And it doesn't you help that I mean? you can barely understand him. It's like he's Scottish. I, well, I, that makes sense because I could completely understand him. So. <laughs> <laughs> but as an American, when he's just like, no, you can die. And you're like, what? What? Yeah. Well, I need I need subtitles for this movie I'm in the theater for. <laughs> I'm like I've turned into an old man who needs soup all of a sudden. <laughs> Where are my subtitles? Give me some cream of mushroom. <laughs> the beef stew is too chunky. <laughs> anyway, so that's the bad movie. I don't want to linger on it because it's like it's like it's a totally competent production. It's just kind of a shitty way to end that franchise. Mm. And watching them all back to back, it's like Batman Begins is pretty good. Dark Knight is amazing. And then Dark Knight Rises is like a big mess. I'm like, wait a second, what? Are there police trapped in the sewers for how long? Weeks? Are yeah, they? But, uh, I, the way I look at that series is that is very much the. You know, that, that to me is the epitome of a horror franchise done as a superhero trilogy. So you start with so much promise, and then you hit those really good ones in the middle, and then ultimately at the end, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> and why yeah. won't you end? Uh, yeah, one too far. All of a sudden, there's a dog pissing on Batman's yep. grave. He's back. He comes back. Um, yeah. Just right. old old busted Batman is the thing that kind of ruined it a little bit for me at the start. It's when I knew I wasn't going to get the movie that I wanted. The, yeah, the whole idea that Batman was just like, well, guess I'm going to quit. And that, like, that yeah. is a, kind of a problem for me. And anyway, yeah, yeah. but that's that's a real, like, nitpicky kind of nerd problem to have with it. I'm kind of willing yeah. to let the movie go, that, go with that. But all the Catwoman stuff feels so tacked on, too. It doesn't really evolve into a real relationship like, and... i've said before this is the this is the problem with and this is where we get the hate mail so direct at duncan not at bo these are not bo's opinions this is just my general problem with like comic book adaptations in general is that like at some point they need to involve so many nods and so many characters and so many things just becomes nauseating um i think insular is better i think we're constantly raising the stakes to an extent, devalues the property. There's only so many things yeah. I can be worried that the city's going to burn down to the ground or the earth's about to blow up before I'm like, ah, eh. you know what I mean? And that's that's the problem. You raise the stakes so high so quickly that it's very difficult to rein it back. So when that movie spends half an hour at the beginning with old busted retired Batman and I, I'm like that, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> oh, it's... come on. Uh, I just want it right in the middle of the action because I've I paid my dues. I've watched his origin. 
I don't want to feel like I have to watch him reestablish himself as Batman. I that feels like an origin dues. story, which I have sat through. I, I, I have this image of you now, like singing some blue song about getting through the origin of Batman one more time. I pay my dues. No, it's, it's, I know, even, I know what not happened. Even the worst one. It's not, that's not even the worst one. It's the Spider-Man origin. It's like, yeah. I, like I saw that three times in the space of. What, 15 years? Hey, I, look, <laughs> what are we doing? Not like we... All credit to the Marvel movies for not bothering with that. I mean, I... Yeah, I like... don't need to see it. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, so, there we, we're getting some clarification on Ouija Sasquatch not appearing, but Ouija Shark and Ouija Mummy did. Might be thinking of Yo. Ouija Mummy. Now I that I think about it, let's we'll, do it. Yeah, let's... Uh, we'll... I don't know. Was it Ouija Mummy? I, I still feel like there was a Ouija Sasquatch somewhere. And maybe Ouija it was just Mommy a just fever seems... dream. <laughs> Ouija... <laughs> That's your... It's your brain saying, Bo, this is a script. Right. <laughs> this is a script you should be writing. Right. Like when I wake up tomorrow, I'll realize like, oh no, it was Ouija, <laughs> Ouija Sasquatch by Bo Ransdell all along. Um... <laughs> for years, they've been searching in the woods for the elusive cryptid. It's been... Little did they know that he was actually on the other side of the spirit world coming to right. coming to a prime near you right oh now look we'll get into some sasquatch theories another day but there is duncan yeah. an entire theory about how the sasquatch is kind of either uh, uh, associated with ufos or maybe a magical being himself or or duncan perhaps uh it lives in a network of underground caves that allows it to avoid detection and, ah, uh, and also so the old uh, friday friday 13 remake theory nice. <laughs> right that all the sasquatches uh have been like living underground with cages and uh bells and shit so yeah. when you wander into the woods they're like oh we can't <laughs> We we got to get meat in their meal, yeah. knife and fork on fine china, and the bell goes, oh, cheese it. Oh. It's humans, and then they have to go down to the caves for a little while until everybody leaves again. Um, <laughs> I think <laughs> I think we're onto something, folks. Uh, not only is that a great idea, um, Best we idea have ever. Let's we, make it happen. We have lots of great ideas. Uh, if you would like us to answer a question, you can drop it in the chat right now. Here are a couple that were sent uh, via Facebook and email. Uh, you can, as always, uh, send your questions to Bo, that is B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Uh, that's how the Ram Man sent us a question, Duncan. Oh, we love that Ram Man. And he says, uh, and this is kind of on topic, all right, let's get to a serious issue. The Avengers. This is a hypothetical situation, but imagine if you will, if you will, a world where Thanos killed off all the MCU heroes. However, due to some interdimensional fuckery, the space-time continuum is fractured, and now four new heroes have arisen to face off against the Mad Titan. Here's the catch: all the heroes are characters from DBCC. So uh, his proposition <laughs> is. Power Ranger Wilford Brimley from the the mm -hmm. X-Files season. Uh, the High Priestess of Death from Too Old to Die Young, mm -hmm. I, I, which I think is a great call. Uh, yes. Stand-up comedian Pinhead. <laughs> which I don't know how effective he's going to be in that scenario, but... It depends. Depends what set he brings with him, but he might slay them. Kill them laughing. <laughs> right. Oh, oh Thanos. Uh, you're a tough crowd. Uh, yeah. Oh, hello there, Thanos. Uh, what is the deal with this aeroplane food? Ah, um, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and then his fourth is uh, Hippolyta from Lovecraft Ooh. Country, and Ooh, his good, question, good. yep, is how fucked is Thanos in this scenario, which we we were uh touching on. He says uh, as a postscript. I was 100% sober while composing this email. So, um, see, I, what I would do is I would I would take Pinhead out of the equation and I would substitute Nadine from Twin Peaks. Her superpower would be the power of her squeaking voice would be enough to make like heads explode, scanner style. Uh, and then I would I would drop I would drop Brimley Power Rangers all together. I'd have a trio like Charlie's Angels of girl power, and I think those three girls would kick Thanos's ass. 
I, I like the Nadine inclusion. She's uh, too good not to include. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> I'll come at you like, like a monkey. <laughs> it's all genitals yeah, so, and jaws. <laughs> so, super powered. Because remember, she had that freak strength when she dressed like a cheerleader. So she is practically a superhero already. Yeah, that's right. Not the one that anyone wanted, but what we deserved. She yes, she does get superpower. That man, she yeah. legit is. She is a superhero. So Twin Peaks is so good, like a superhero. So fucking good. Um, how, but how fucked is Thanos? Uh, I, you know, look, I think Power Ranger Wilford Brimley alone. It's just like it'll just march in and be like, "All right, cut the bullshit, goddamn it! Give me that goddamn glove." Everybody's gonna go home. Mercy gone, goddamn it! Right. <laughs> um, and then of course you've got the high priestess of, of death, and I mean she'll she'll get Thanos to sing a song and then murder him right after. I might have to watch that show again because I've been pining for it recently. It was so fucking good. Yeah. I know like Nicholas Winden Ref and teased something recently, which people are interpreting as a season two, which I don't think is going to happen, but if it did, I'd be very happy. So Oh wow. I wonder. Either that or like Kojima will turn it into a video game. Why uh, not? Yeah. Spin and rumble. <laughs> Speaking of. Uh-huh. Question number two. Did you just is, segue? Did yeah, you just segue? I did. Oh, did you just uh, like, like, oh, oh, it's a beautiful thing to see in the wild. Yeah, it's it felt good. Um, Robert asks, uh, what are a couple of games you both played last year that you had fun with and uh, would recommend? Uh, he tags on that he played a bit of uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, uh, which uh, I, I played a while back. Uh, and said he didn't get too far, but uh, yeah, I, that's a that's a real fun game. They did a remaster of it for all the con new consoles and stuff. And if you've never played Phoenix Wright, you should. But Duncan, what I about you? Not. What uh, what what games have you played over the past year or so that you would recommend to folks? Um, the big one for me last year was Ghost of Tsushima, uh, which I thought was like hands down incredible um i love like, I, I mean i'm a, a big fan of samurai movies and kurosawa and, and all that jazz anyway and it felt very authentic to that and then playing that game with you know the score of seven samurai and all that play in my headphones is the way you do that you just like a, a renegade ro ronin just uh roaming the the, the wilds uh dispatching mongols um, it was really good. I also got a chance to, although I never ever completed it, and I'm I'm probably going to hold off now because there's rumours afloating that it's going to be remastered for PS5 with additional content. But that Death Stranding, um, I got halfway through that, and that is a weird fucking game, but for all its weirdness, and I'm just walking from A to B trying not to fall over, it was so immersive that I lost, like, hours playing that. Like, just just completely like absorbed by the gameplay uh, so those are probably the two big ones i don't get near, i'm obviously trying to get back into gaming now but i don't get nearly as much time certainly last year to sit down and and video game as much as i want uh just because of the podcast and stuff uh but this year i'm making a concerted effort to to do more with it so uh bo will have played about a million times more games uh that, than i did last year but those are the two that stood out to me yeah, I've yet to play uh, either of those actually. So, um, I would uh, Death Stranding for the reasons of like uh, I'm kind of waiting for this to hit. Like the remaster, yeah. I was kind of hoping they'd throw that into that you know PS5 package of like, hey, yeah. play these old PS4 games, you know. Um, and uh, but I'll at some point I'll get to Tsushima. That'll happen this year. Oh, dude, yeah, yeah that's that. I mean, that's my my fear was it was going to feel very much like um, like a kind of the Asian Assassin's Creed that I always wanted but never got, um, and it kind of it does follow certain things like that. But it's it's if you if you grew up watching proper like authentic samurai movies from like the the sixties and seventies, um, that's that's the world it inhabits, and everything is done meticulous. Like there are points in the game, there are all these different haiku points where you just stop and create your own haiku. Which I just love that as just being a, a an element in the game. <laughs> yeah, so, let's let's compose a haiku. Um, so I'm like, yeah, let's do that. <laughs> I know I've just slaughtered a whole uh, you know band of marauding 
Mongols a couple of minutes ago. But you know what? I am. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop and compose this haiku while looking at this beautiful waterfall, reminiscing over my dead uncle. Yeah. Um, like, I mean, so, uh, culture it's is its art, Duncan. It's not. Yes. It's not who you kill. It's who who you write about. Yeah, a culture is its art. I don't know if you know this. Scotland is famous for deep fat frying a Mars bar. It's true. And God bless their welcome, uh, clogged hearts. You're welcome, world. <laughs> That one was for you. Um, <laughs> Tennessee, we learned how to deep fry a deep fryer, and uh, that's Easty. been it's been successful. It's made the the county fair circuit. Um, it, uh, there was usually... recently a video. There's a there was a video I saw recently, and I can't remember who what channel it was on um but it was doing this it was doing the circle on if you ever if you ever just want to like i know scotland is the brunt of a few jokes uh mostly at the hands of scots because we, we do like poking fun at ourselves mm -hmm. but the list of things that were invented in this country is fucking daunting like like ridiculous uh and there was a i need to find it but there's a, a guy who goes through it all he doesn't even touch on the big ones like television and telephone i mean he doesn't get as far as that but the the list is like he just keeps going through it and i'm like yeah but we did a lot until like 1940 and then we just stopped I'm like fuck it yeah <laughs> just fat, take it fry the mars result. bar <laughs> look <laughs> yeah <laughs> You take you take a century off. You you get your breath. You declare independence, and then mm. you know you've got the the next renaissance of of Scotland. It could happen. It could happen. I look. I'm all I, for I, I it. was seeing. I, I was seeing. Although it did seem like the beginning of a dystopian, um, like horror movie. But uh, Scottish scientists, uh, I think it's Edinburgh University, have uh, are on a good track to. Um, I think it's uh, create like a a vaccine. Well, it won't even be a vaccine. It'll be a curable treatment for motor neurons disease. Um, oh wow! Like they're very, 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 very close to that apparently. Uh, so Scotland and, and Bugfast <laughs> and kebabs. Ian points out. Yes, yeah, that's that is true. That's Bugfast is fucked up, you guys. Bugfast is not nice. <laughs> yeah, that is <laughs> that's a rough. I drink. can't drink it. Yeah, I can't drink it, and I've got friends that like my older brother, my older brother, like, and he's not an alcoholic. I just want to stress that right now. But my oh, older wow. brother, that's always how well, a good story starts. He's not, he's not. But if my older brother is going for like, if he's going to the, for a night out or whatever like that, like, I've been at weddings with him where like, like early, early, <laughs> like, because I, I imagine America's the same. Uh, like, you go to the reception, alcohol is a bit pricey because it's a wedding so they tack a couple of pound on a pint um and he'll very very quickly go right like come on and we'll go and try and find like a because I, well, I know america is different depending on what state you are but pretty much any shop can apply to be an off license so like even small like grocery shops can be an off license so like alcohol is readily available and um he will you know like, come on let's go and he'll go and buy himself a bottle which he will just sink as if it's nothing um, and that's him in the zone. And if I have a sip of it, I vom. Oh, I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm like right from the Exorcist, like yeah. funnel of of green split pea soup uh, right across the room. It, but he can. That's his night out started when he when he has one of them, and it is vile. Oh, that's the worst. Um, Petrol mixed with Vimto says Ian. So that's that's his description of butt fast, which isn't far off it. What you missed the caffeine. There's like that caffeine content and, right. and fucking butt fast is through the roof. If right, anytime you're basing your beverage decision on I need to be really, really fucked up, but I can't fall asleep right now. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, you're just you're you're in a weird place in life and you just need to stop and think about it. It's how you go drinking in Elm Street, Bo. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> Right. Yeah, the Elm Street kids need buck fast, but the rest of yeah, us... For, forget, what was that, Hypnosil? That, yes, I forget was about to make a Hypnosil joke. God damn you. It should have been buck fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One, two, buck fast coming for you. Um, It's the song they sing when you're about to be homeless. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Duncan... Yes, Bo. Let's uh, let's get to the real reason we're here. How about we start the show? Ed, you mean we haven't already? <laughs> eh, ish. Um, so as, it's what as they call a preamble. Yeah, it, that's a an introduction. 
which has become yeah. just half the show. Um, yes. But uh, so th- this episode, and and as always, I point out to listeners, uh, look, not only do you not have to watch this show to enjoy this portion <laughs> of our show, we kind of recommend yeah. you don't. Yeah, and let's not give them any more. I mean, once they make season four and Cronenberg's done his bits and, and left, right. well, let's just make sure. Like, Unless that season is amazing, I like three episodes in, I am surprised it's got a season two. I'm yes, but we'll anyway. Let's get to our dark business, which is uh, a, a a show that we mention is is entitled "Like as Fire Eateth Up and Burneth Wood." Yeah, which uh, rolls in, off the tongue. You right, as I think about it, just means uh, as things burn. Yes, that's a burning uh, things a long and stupid way of of burning wood. Uh, so anyway, uh, it's prom night. 1968 and the movie night of the creeps is just beginning duncan and i get excited for a second but it turns out that this convertible is not in fact in night of the creeps which is a real bummer it is instead in slasher and it's a bunch of kids like high school kids on their way to prom i believe yeah this is how the previous episode finished so but we're getting a bit more context a bit more meat on the bones bowl yeah, because the one thing that I constantly think when I'm watching Slasher is, could you go into more extended detail? <laughs> and and uh, so a couple of girls in the front seat are arguing about some music and like the the stuck up girl, as we will learn, is uh, what's her name, Sonia, uh, the mm-hmm. the older lady who's now married to the the mayor, mayor, um, yeah, yeah, and she's like. Who needs all that Rolling Stones in music that's good to fuck to when you have Frankie Valley and Ada, her friend, is in the middle. Yeah, it's real snarly. And yep. Ada is like, you know, I like that music, but I like Frankie Valley too because I'm a bridge builder. I'm a peacemaker. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of bridges. <laughs> right. And so as they're talking about that, they're driving under this bridge and – uh, crazy girl for the last episode is dropping a cinder block from the bridge into the moving, uh, the moving convertible, mm. and it fucking hits the the girl that the bridge builder, the peacemaker Ada, right in the fucking skull. Yeah, I, I believe this is like an actual physical cop block. <laughs> right, it's a, a block block, a block block. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and. And we'll get to the the reasons why this happens, oh, but yeah. and, and right before this, they're also bad mouth and their their quote slut friend, who it yeah. turns out is the best character on the show, best character by a country fucking male. Yeah, and anyway, so we cut. Also, from- like just before going any further, that revelation which we're going to get to, but like you know that character can't can't really criticize her daughter for all the film sex surely no she's a fucking murderer <laughs> or almost you know I mean? attempted murderer you know what I mean? like i was just thinking like, I, I pivoted from that to the righteousness that she was uh, like like sweeping out amongst everyone in the previous episode and i was like mm, the lady doth protest too much right <laughs> so, i mean like we'll get to it but you know Sarah is right when she's like, "You're a fucking murderer," you know. <laughs> uh, you murdered her. You might as well put a potato in her mouth and choked her to death. Um, sometimes so, stereotypes are true, but yeah, sometimes they are. That's that was that. That's 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 how they execute people in Ireland back before <laughs> before corporal punishment was uh, before the potato famine. Punishment. That's why the potato before famine the, happened. Yeah. They, no, 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 no. They used the potato, the poison potatoes to kill them. Oh. Death by poison potato. The old poison potato routine. <laughs> you think I've got to fall for the old poison potato in the tailpipe? You gotta, no, you gotta let it come loose. Say, I ain't gonna fall for no potato in no pail, tailpipe. <laughs> <laughs> What you don't know is I've slowly been building up an immunity to poison potatoes. <laughs> but you would know. <laughs> anyway, so 
we we <laughs> cut away from this horrible tragedy of this girl getting knocked in the fucking skull with the cinder block to this old woman laying in bed and we see brenda our our grandmother you know sarah's yep. grandmother on the show and she's like i gotta tell you ada i <laughs> I trade places with you in a second. Look at you lying there. You look so classy. Right. <laughs> look, after the day I've had, I could use a nap for about 20 or 30 years. <laughs> anyway, so then we do our opening credits, and we, we, <laughs> we come back to Robin just kind of fondling Justin's dead body in a funeral home. Because remember, yeah. he died in the last episode because of rat poison. Yeah, yeah, the most elaborate setup ever. Like, Jigsaw would be proud. <laughs> right. <laughs> Justin, I want to play a game. <laughs> yeah, it will take an entire episode to do and will involve impossible situations with your boyfriend, which I'll use as a distraction to get you. Do you want to play? Oh, it's... Oh, God. No, anyway, <laughs> I don't want to play. <laughs> I need, at, at the end of this season, I need whoever is behind this, probably Cam, uh, <laughs> To sit down and say, here is how I orchestrated everything, because this is baffling. This yeah, is giallo-level complicated. Yeah, at this point just now, I want Cam to be revealed, but also to have his face removed and realize it was Willie, the lighthouse keeper. I, I went to be Chief Brimley all along. and <laughs> God, 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 God damn it. it. I'm just tired of all of you telling me that I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, so... And <laughs> mourning so much about a serial killer being in the town that he actually gave him a serial killer in the town. Kind of like that. Yeah. You know, right. what you, watch what you ask for. Yeah. It's a real careful what you wish for. So. Yes. Brimley going to give it to you. Brimley going to give it to you. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, now, Rat Brimley is all I can think about. Rat Brimley. He's got big golden chains around him, a bandana. <laughs> A grill? Oh, could you imagine Wilford Brimley with a, like a gold grill in his mouth? Instead of like a little John Yeah, it's God damn it. <laughs> he he comes in to just jump on people's tracks to God damn it. His his mobility scooter's got those like those those spinners, yeah. <laughs> Some neon underneath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I need that movie. <laughs> no, sir, I gotta go. I'm about to drop something on Lil Nas's new new record. <laughs> you know, <laughs> got like, got to head the studio. Goddamn it! Love this idea of like a kind of almost uh, usual suspects flashback to how things actually happened between Biggie and Tupac. You <laughs> right. find that it was Br it was Brimley that killed them all along. Yeah, Brimley with that gun in Vegas. <laughs> Biggie says hi, God damn it. Flap, flap, flap. <laughs> I think we cracked the case. Finally. I knew we would, Bill. It was Any inevitable. <laughs> anyway, Duncan, in the show that we're talking about. Oh, yeah, the show. That's right. Yeah. Slasher. Sarah and Dylan are heroes? Question mark. Um, Just kind of park somewhere and start walking around. I wasn't really sure why. It's there. It's yeah. clear they're coming from the funeral, and then they just get out of their car and they wander to the police station. Mm -hmm. But Dylan is like, "Well, at least it was a nice service, and you know, people seem to really like Justin." And Sarah flips out on him, and she's like, "Jesus, Mary and Joseph, it's not a popularity <laughs> contest." And <laughs> she's like. Look, I'm sorry. I've been under a lot of pressure lately, on account of all the murders, and thinking I might be next in all. And and Dylan's like, yeah. yeah kind of transitioning a little bit towards uh, Dick Van Dyke. Love it. Keep it going. Whatever. But I'm, I'm confused whether she's a, a, a humble Irish potato farmer or a Cockney chimney sweep. It's kind of like the Brundle fly equivalent. Keep it going, boy. Why do you have Loving to put it. labels on stuff, Duncan? Have you not watched In and of Itself yet? <laughs> So, <laughs> don't worry about the accent. She's not. We care more about her accent than she did, clearly. 
Um, um, she doesn't give a fuck. Bro. Do not paint me as the as the villain here. <laughs> I will not stand for it or sit for it. I will stand for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but Dylan's whole argument against her being upset is just like, baby, everything's confusing right now. It's like what? And he's yeah. like, yeah, just don't worry about it. it you are a terrible husband. That is the He's shittiest advice away. I've ever heard. It's like two seconds away from saying life is hard. <laughs> it is. It's a total like, I don't know, shit's fucked up, I guess. And, and that's yeah, it. I bought you a t-shirt rough. that says life's a bitch, then you die. And so they just wander to the police station where a bunch of vagrants with cameras are standing waiting for uh, the chief to come out. And, yeah. and <laughs> Cam is like, Hey, I'll, I'll, uh, I'm going to have the uh, cop car watching your house and stuff. And then mayor, it, look, this mayor, uh, who's Sonia's husband and all that, he comes out, he looks like he is either on or fresh off of a bender, you know, yeah. like he, his clothes are all rumpled. So, I mean, it's just like, you know, <laughs> hail to mayor hangover. And yeah. <laughs> he comes out to, to just announce like, well, we arrested Heather and Dylan, who uh, I maybe Sarah just followed up, uh, Dylan along because he was supposed to be reporting on this, maybe. but they're also coming from the funeral. <laughs> this is all real hazy. And, but anyway, Dylan is like, uh, yeah, Dylan from the one newspaper in town. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Dylan, we had dinner at your house last night. Um, um, because they all know each other. Familiar. Come on. Yeah, it's oh. it's so stupid. And then he says, uh, he, uh, Dylan is like, hey, do you believe the murders of uh, Justin and Vernon McBride are connected? And the mayor is just like, totally, 100%. Yeah, well, yeah like we got a, <laughs> a real problem, a real killer. And yeah. Dylan actually <laughs> looks surprised like, oh, did he just totally, he just answered that question in a straightforward manner oh all right the hangover bo see when you're hungover you will say anything to make the conversation stop <laughs> right he's just like whatever man and and fortunately chief brimley shows up and just pushes him out of the way he's just like all right god damn it look <laughs> i got i got something to tell everybody we got we got the goddamn autopsy results from that that gay feller and before he can get anything out, which, by the way, why are you interrupting somebody reporting autopsy results? That is something mm -hmm. this guy will never do. Like, hey, w hey, before you get to the cool reason why someone died, <laughs> let me interrupt you to ask questions. <laughs> Jesus Christ, sit on it for a second. But some let lady... me tell you everything that we know. <laughs> like, right. So... <laughs> Let's and, just get like all those details out there in the public domain. I hope you're writing this down, news folk. And oh, instead, man. before he can get it out, some lady reporter is like, wait a second. I've got a question. What do you think Heather's motive was? Uh, and he's like, um, look, that's kind of an ongoing investigation. Yeah. And he, Brimley is like, look, we, we had a goddamn eyewitness. It said there were some issues with business dealings with Justin, and he was, and she was real upset about it. And that's all. I'm done. Questions over. He's open. closed. <laughs> and so as he's taken off, Sarah is like, I think they got the wrong executioner. <laughs> I'm going to do that every time I see you taking a drink, just an FYI. <laughs> and... I think the real ones are still out there. Something isn't adding up here. <laughs> yeah. We better investigate. Um <laughs> so <there's orcs? laughs> Chicken skinny in the back. Oh man, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Ruh -ruh, Sarah. Uh anyway, so Brenda is back in like or still at question mark uh, Ada's bedroom. Mm -hmm. And um Talking to her about, like, you know, oh, back in the day, look, here's some pictures of the people we went to school with. Look at this fat pig, huh? Yeah. Remember when <laughs> he looked like a real something back in the day? Now, now he looks like you'd be clapping for him to grab a fish out of a trainer's hand. <laughs> and, 
and Sonia, uh, her bitchy friend that she ran into on the street in the last episode shows up and is like, hey, dummy, she's a vegetable. <laughs> she can't yeah. hear you. <laughs> and uh, Brit is like, been like that since that, that stone fell out of the sky. <laughs> right. Hey. And a crime that no one seems convinced or even interested in doing anything about anymore. Right. Do- Incidentally, where were you that night? You know what I mean? Well, but it, what we realized is they were talking about her in the car, and they were like, yeah, she doesn't have a date to prom because yeah. she's a slut. And slut. Slut. I and don't know if that's how that works, like, I, to prom. I would have thought that would have, like, in, in that time period, that would have aided your selection for prom. Right. You're, you're certainly not the last pick for dodgeball. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> um, <laughs> also, you're not dodging them balls. No. You know what I mean? You're accepting them. Thank you, boss. You're gargling them. Oh, oh Duncan. <laughs> well, that's rude. He said that. Uh, bad, like, that's, a, that's a bad thing that happened there. And so Sonia is like, I come by every other week and spruce her up, AK put some makeup on this potato. And Brenda is is getting chatty <laughs> uh, about, like, oh, it is so nice that we can see each other again. And Sonia is like, hey, cut the bullshit what are you doing here and uh brit is like okay you got me i've been kind of a bad friend for a little while but i'm trying to make up the lost time and sonia is like first of all go fuck yourself i can't give you whatever absolution you're looking for mm-hmm. and brent is like fine i'm leaving but you know what I wish that cinder block had fallen a couple of feet to the left. You know what I mean, Sonia? Like on your noggin? Huh? <laughs> and and then she takes off and Sonia is like, mm. <laughs> you know, mm. bitch. And <laughs> bitch. Yeah, I like these two are almost coming to blows every episode, which I really dig. Uh which would be a good thing to flesh out over more episodes, Bo. It would have been nice, yes. So we cut to Sarah, who is hanging art in her gallery. Of course she is. Right. <laughs> like she, in one day, she painted it and got the register set up and yeah. all that stuff. Now she's now, hanging now, art. I'm looking forward to this scene because the way she looks back in this scene and kind of plays it off as if maybe she was in the wrong. I'm going to say she was in the right 100%. This is this guy. Like, when he come through the door, a rape whistle should have been <laughs> used straight away. He should give and one to like, her. You're going to need this in a minute. You're, you're going to need this for this scene. Um, because, like, th- this guy comes in. He's looking around. The, and she's, like, instantly, she's kind of, mm, something kind of strange here. Asks a lot of questions. She's getting very personal with the, the pictures. Uh, he's particularly fascinated by it. And this is the best thing. The picture that's out on the shop floor amongst all the other paintings that are for sale, Bo, that looks like it might be for sale. Um, and he just wants to know who did it, can he buy it, and all the rest. And, of course, this is a picture that she started painting since the executioner appeared back on the scene. So this is obviously her, you know, channeling this as part of her, uh, you know, artistic musings uh, on the canvas. But this guy is two steps away from full-on physical assault. Yeah. Right? He's it's like really, of... he's like right up in her face and he's cordoned her off. And it's very personal. The way she talks about this later on is if this innocent customer, innocent customer came in to buy a picture and she overreacted. I'm like, no, you shouldn't need him in the balls, maced him in the eyes, flung him out the fucking door, locked it, phoned the police. There's a killer on the loose. Yeah. It, it's a disturbing performance from this dude. Like he's the kind of guy that just stops just a little short of asking for some of her hair you know i swear i swear it was not far off it it's it is so blatantly i mean there's red herrings right and then there are look at this guy look at this guy look at this guy and that is literally what they're doing here and he's just been invited you know he's just been like invented as a character for this particular scene so he's not the fucking killer we know that slasher so don't bother trying to make it that way. And if you're going to make it that way, make it more through the whole scene is through her eyes. And this guy doing things that could be interpreted as reasonable through her eyes or, you know, 
are, are, are menacing. But no, no, no. This guy literally is the, the creepiest creep ever who has creeped in a gallery. Yes. Yeah. yeah, his opening gambit is, you're Sarah, I take it? And <laughs> she's like, the fuck? And he's like, yeah, I, I looked you up on the Chamber of Commerce website. I've paid attention to everybody who moves into town and yeah. I've got file on them at home. I've got, I've got, I've got, I've got a hole cut in my pocket to keep my change right now. Um, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? I moved here last spring, and you know, I just need some stuff on my walls other than feces and straw. You know, <laughs> and and then after he hits on, yeah, I, need, I need proper art on my, on my wall, not photos of all the women that are in town with red circles around their feces <laughs> and their husbands cut out of the pictures. Those belong in the files. I, I also cut out their eyes. You know. <laughs> Do you see? Huh? Do you see? <laughs> <laughs> but it's a real Tom Noonan performance, isn't it? He's two steps away from pulling the stock and just over the top of his head to buy a picture. <laughs> hey, you want you want to go pet a tiger? Huh, Sarah? Come, come pet my tiger. <laughs> so, and later on, though, I mean, to your point, she goes home and calls Dylan, who is still at work? Question mark. And yeah, and is like, you're never gonna believe it. This really nice guy came in and bought six paintings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really nice guy who came, enthusiastic buyer who bought six paintings practically sexually molested me but because i'm paranoid i took the things that he did in my shop as being aggressive yeah and and then she's like boy i sure wish you was home so i can feel safe i miss you and then outside we see that hey someone aka the dark condom is watching (laughs) Um, and there's like you see the police car kind of position the condom you need not the condom you want yeah. <laughs> I've got a I've got a hole in the tip. <laughs> it's I need I need something mobile for dogs. <laughs> yeah. You sure tiger condom? Yes. You heard what I said. <laughs> oh, is that not lost the wife? <gasps> <laughs> Some condoms just want to see the world burn, Master Wayne. I will not bury another condom. I won't do it. Flushing it down the toilet. Yeah. Another used condom, Master Wayne. I want to see you as a condom. While I drink my Funnit Bronco. So, uh, it's real dumb. And so, meanwhile, uh, our our man Robin is on the phone with an angry customer uh, who's, you know, something about listing a house or something. And Robin is like, hey, husband just died and was murdered horribly from poison. But you give me a break. And you, so, you might have read about it because it's in the papers, you know, the local paper front page. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so he hangs up on this dude, and then in comes Trent. <laughs> Trent, which the show is so desperately, desperately wanting you to say, well, Trent's a killer. Right. He's doing everything but, like, reading a copy of The King in Yellow. Oh, I th- yeah. At the end of this episode, and like, this is Slash's equivalent of the gas mask scene. Yeah. At the end of episode three of fucking True Detective. Yes. Um, it's like, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, see what you're doing, I, Slasher. I, I, I see yeah, what you're doing. I was like, I'm like, really? Are we doing this? Are we doing it? Really? Oh, man. No, 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 no. So Trent comes in and Trent's yeah. all heart. You know, there's a big heart in this guy. Yeah, it, it, like his whole deal, which isn't wrong, is that Justin had given him a check that bounced 
And Robin is like, well, let me check and see what I got on me. And Trent's like, oh, no, no, no. This is a, a $250,000 check. It's the yeah. down payment for my hunting lodge. And I'm, I'm going to come back tomorrow, and I'm going to expect a check for $250,000 that doesn't bounce. And I mean, I'm no, I'm no okay with things uh, to do with checks. That like, I, I luckily grew up in a time period where checks were kind of on the way out. And um, could you cut a check for a quarter of a million? Sure, you could. You can write a check could for you? anything. It's fucking nuts. Yeah, I look. I can write a I'm check for three billion dollars that... right now, Duncan. <laughs> I'm surprised that anyone got anything done. Like, I'm surprised that everyone wasn't fucking bankrupt and there's one supreme ruler who, like, I mean, checks are so easily fucking let me, forged. Let me tell you a, a little story. When I worked at a little grocery store when I was mm -hmm. uh, in high school, you know, I did like bagging groceries and socking shelves, that kind of shit. It was a little mom and pop place. And this is before the age of widespread internet. And yeah. so uh, when, and, and people would run those scams, they would come in and we would charge a fee to cash a check. But what they yep. would do is, you know, take that money, deposit it in their bank to cover the other checks that they had written. So it's yeah. this constant, like, cascade of, I got to stay ahead of it. Yeah. And yeah. and some people would get real fucked. Like, somebody would just not show up for a while. And you'd be like, hey, what happened to Willie? And they'd be like, oh, he's in jail now. He was passing bad checks Dumped all over town. And, <laughs> uh, but, you know. We got our money. Uh, so, in, uh, was it the, the, the say, uh, oh, what's that? Some, I can't remember. There's a, there's a, a paying Peter to pay Paul. No, that oh, yeah. Sense. Robbing Peter to pay Paul. That's it. Robbing yep. Peter to pay Paul. Like, that sort of idea. So, mm -hmm. that's the, I just, I never, I never understood like, the whole check thing at all. I, I suppose maybe the world was just a bit more trusting. It was. It, it was uh, before we we got to know that everybody was kind of a shit bag. It, yeah. You kind of were free to assume that some people were good, mm -hmm. um, and you know that's largely been dispelled. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the last five years has really really went out of its way to make sure that you don't think that. <laughs> All right, let's let's get to the one of the the scene winners of of this oh. episode, mm -hmm. which is Brenda. Uh, hanging out at the bar, the local bar, having a martini, and Mayor yep. Hangover comes in for a little hair of the dog. <laughs> and Brenda sees him as like, oh, Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie. How about you come sit down next to Brenda? Sit down beside your old pal, Brenda. And he, yeah, he's just like, well, I don't know. I mean, I probably shouldn't. Cut to a hallway, and he and Brenda are just fucking in the hall. Yeah, he's he's trying to get knuckles deep. And Brenda's, you know, I mean, like Brenda's like moving them around, maneuvering, and it looks like things are about to get like, oh man. And you know what I, I love is that the mere hangover just keep mentioning the fact that he's married. I mean, nothing turns on a woman like the fact that the man she's about to fuck is married. I mean, this is like, you know, I mean, mentioning how great she looked when she was younger and all the rest. And then Brenda dries up quick. <laughs> yeah. Know? She's like, I'm not one of any of this. Yeah. Totally changes her mind midstream, and he's like, oh, come on, baby, you want this as much as I do? And yeah. then Brenda says, and I quote, look, your ass feels like cauliflower. You got more <laughs> hair on your back than your head, and your dick has always been two sizes too small. So, no, I don't need it. What, it is what was missing in that tremendous. scene is all the doors and the hallway should open up, and people should just come out like, boom! <laughs> right <laughs> there are, it's the sickest barn it is it's tremendous and and one of someone the reasons, calling someone calling 911 to get like a well, we need a burns unit here straight away stat the bartender um, just leans into the hallway with a <laughs> bottle of aloe sir yeah. i believe you're going to need this on account of that <laughs> sick burn yes yeah, someone someone out of nowhere just for no reason at all the camera pans the way damn you right. know <laughs> god damn and totally like because it's a, a, an amazing put down like like just well crafted but then i was thinking i was thinking about this what the, the, like, was brenda always going to do this then was it just to like the motivation's not fully formed here is yeah like was she always going to do this just to humiliate him 
as a way to get back at these people, or was this a fact that she she really wanted? She's on this tear to try and recapture her youth. That she really wanted this, and then in the moment she, you know, her heart grew, grew three sizes that day, and her conscience did as well. I, d- I don't know. It just feels like so strange. And once again, she's the best character in this. Yeah, my my theory, Duncan, and it's only yep. a theory because you're right. We have there's so much fan fiction you have to write to make this show make sense. Yep. But my theory is that it's it's it is kind of recapturing her lost youth a little bit because there's the conversation in the um convertible about how like Ronnie might or like she might have been into Ronnie and Sonya yeah. as a kid is shutting that shit down is like no 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 Ronnie is that's my dick you know <laughs> and so i think there's a little bit of that and then coupled with her realizing like what she's doing and kind of the shame of it of like yeah you know what am i i'm i'm a grown woman trying to chase this and again this is all me reading into what i kind of want that character to be versus maybe what it is yeah um which is probably probably a writer's room going i don't know what to write next maybe they fuck maybe they stop in the middle of it yeah let's just do both um how about instead uh the executioner shows up yeah good jim and so, and, and, right, and that's what happens. We cut from that to the the dark condom yanking the cop out of uh, the, his cruiser in front of Sarah's house. Once again, also kind of maybe hinting towards the fact that this might be Cam. It might be Cam. Like, I think Cam or Dylan are kind of the people that you're maybe yeah. chasing. Because, but- like, Cam, Cam, you would have thought, like, Cam's the one that put the cop car there. Right. So... What better way to throw them off the scent than to be Cam? Right, and also to not be married or... Anyway, so anyway, yep. so Sarah is inside the house, and she gets a, a phone call, but nobody says anything. And yep. she's just like, oh, Faith and Pegora. And she hangs <laughs> up. And then it rings again, and, you know, hello? Hello? And nothing. So it rings a third time, and finally she's like, all right. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go get the cop outside. And the... Listen here, I've got a particular set of skills that <laughs> make me a very dangerous woman to prank call. Yeah. Listen, you're about to be taken. Because um, <laughs> that is your accent. I've realized that since the last recording. You are doing the female Liam Neeson, and I love it. All right, well, <laughs> look, call it what you will. It is... It's amazing this what I call it, though. Uh so, Liana Neeson is your voice just now. It's amazing. I'll take it. Um, and then the voice is like, "Do you like scary movies?" <laughs> She's like, "What? What?" And Jason's mother is a killer in Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> oh shit! I do that. And then she says, "Oh, uh, the voice says, brave, stupid Sarah." And then she's like, oh, I know it'll put an end to this. And she hangs up and like star 69's the number or whatever mm-hmm. to call it back. And it starts ringing from inside the house. Oh, my God. Oh. And then the uh, the executioner, a.k.a. Dark Condom, starts coming down the stairs mm-hmm. after. Her. And she tries to run outside, but opens the door and there's the cop's body. And she's yep. like, oh. And then, like, turns around and runs the other way. And then, like, right towards the executioner. And she's like, oh! Yeah. Like, she can- Instead of jumping over the body to continue out, she comes back into the house bowl. It's um, so dumb. Like, you're right. So dumb. Just jump yeah. over the body. Like, why are you... Anyway. So she decides, like, oh, wait, I've seen some movies. What's the best place to hide? I know. The <laughs> closet. And so she runs upstairs to the closet like Jamie Lee Curtis. And, like, the dark condom is is slowly coming up the stairs and comes to the door and starts rattling it and shit, and Sarah's holding it closed. Mm -hmm. And then there's nothing for a second, and then she hears Cam's voice calling after, like, Sarah, you home? (laughs) And he finds her in the- It's me, your old buddy Cam. (laughs) Not the killer. (laughs) Right. She rushes out, and he's got, like, dark circles around his eyes like a raccoon. (laughs) It is a total like boyfriend killer, boyfriend killer moment. You yeah, know I mean it's except it's, it's cop killer, cop killer. You know what I mean? It's I, I mean it's too much 
kind of leaning towards Scream for me not to think it's Cam. Right, and because he kind of looks out the window like the killer went out that way. Yeah. But it could also very well just be him like thinking, I almost had her. Um, yeah. I don't know why he's Irish too. That's just me fucking up. Well, it's, it's, it's infectious, bro. It is. I well, it's I like talk pool. It just like spreads through language. I talk like that more than I should. Um, <laughs> but so later, uh, Chief Brimley is saying, like, look, first and foremost, this is not some goddamn executioner. He's dead. <laughs> All right. Whoever killed Dara McBride and Justin ain't the goddamn executioner. And. Brenda and Dylan are bickering as well about Sarah moving away. Like the, you know, mm-hmm. Brenda's position is you got to get her out of here. Like the, she's yeah, going to end up dead. Brenda's position is what I said five minutes into episode one. <laughs> like, like, why is she back in this house? Regardless of the sweetheart deal she got, why is she back in the house? Our parents were murdered then. Yeah. Why? And like, also had just been attacked. Brenda's, yes, I get, like, Brenda is like, she should not be here. And I'm like that. Brenda, cock tease no bitch. I'm with you 100%. Let's get her out. Like, And if you cared anything, Mr. Boyfriend Man, you would have had her out a long time ago. Yep. No, yeah, 100% correct. Yeah. And so... uh Anyway, so they're trying to figure out, is she going to leave tonight? Is she going to leave in the morning? And Sarah looks at Dylan, and she's like, so are you going to take off back to that paper? Or are you going to take care of me in the house? And he, he's like, no, baby, I'm going to be here. And she's like, all right, we'll stay here tonight. And then first thing in the morning, we're going to get the hell out of here. Once again, go now. Like this, you don't have to charter a, a train or book a carriage or anything like that. You have a vehicle. There's three of you. You can alternate drivers. Leave the fucking town. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, like why, why? Oh, let's just sleep on this decision one night. Makes not a lick of sense. If you're committed to go, go. Hop on the bus, Gus. Don't need to discuss much. Get, get the fuck out. <laughs> and But they're, they're going to stay. And Cam is you know watching over this and and brenda starts to eyeball cam a little bit like look at this oh like water. she does she's like mm, mm, mm. yeah and she oh, but i she, am in fact resist <laughs> i'm resisting arrest hey you know what a gilf is <laughs> and, and uh she's a super gilf super gilf she's, she's super, super gilf <laughs> It was unplanned, unrehearsed. Unre- unre- um, yeah. But all right, nice so the, they stay in the house. The next morning, Sarah uh, is like complaining about the fact that uh, you're never going to believe this. Chief Brimley ain't going to release Heather because it could have been a prank or something at, at my house instead of the real killer. And also, I don't know, the judicial system, like just because... <laughs> Just because it's like, oh, maybe the person we arrested isn't the right person. Yeah. You, there's still a process to release them. They, you still have to weigh evidence and shit. And yeah, you can't just be like, oh, this isn't the right. Let's, well, let's let them go. <laughs> like, my bad. Sorry. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Chief Brimley is like, we arrested her. No backsy. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to our Tim serial killer jail. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 we got two cells, one for the resident serial killer, one for other. Um, <laughs> so and she's also uh, she tells Robin he needs to to leave as well, and because they're having this walk through the park, uh, Sarah and Robin, and he's like, "Look, there's this whole will that I have to unravel, not to mention the house and the business, and also I just don't understand why Justin was a target." And Sarah's <laughs> like. You gotta really think about it sometimes. Yeah, he must have done something to get onto Executioner's radar. Well, and- this is the theory from like Tim the Killer. Tim the Killer has basically told her that everyone has a sin somewhere, um, right. and that's how that's how is he picking them? You know, <laughs> is she r- roaming around the west? You know, <laughs> like, so, <laughs> like, is she a great big fat person? <laughs> she a great big fat person. Um, <laughs> so he's. 
but he's put forward the suggestion that everyone holds a secret, which is the nauseating part of this show because I now know that every episode is going to start with, well, this happened in the past for this person and then we're going to flash forward and see them die by the executioner because that's how this show's written. But the, the idea, and I mean, it's not difficult to work out what the idea might be. They move into some territory though, which was slightly unexpected and dumb as fuck. Yeah. Um, it, it so far doesn't seem to be going anywhere, but we'll see. Yeah. So, but after Sarah kind of questions Robin, he's like, yeah, there was that one time that we pushed some squatters off our <laughs> land who later died in a tenement building. Yep. And of she's cold. like, yeah, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> well, the, yeah, they like, like, try to keep uh, themselves warm with a propane heater, like choked on the propane or something. Uh and she's like, like what yeah, year was this? Something like, like that. Like, <laughs> like, like when all this was happening, I was like, what year did this happen? In? Like, <laughs> right. How long have you lived there? When did the, right. Like this was all like, well, it, you know, Justin bulldozed the whole lot and, and, and mm. the, he didn't know those people were there or whatever. Yeah. And it, uh. Right. So Dylan goes to Allison at the newspaper to quit and or inform her that he's leaving yeah, and I think maybe she is his boss. I think we finally. I think she owns that. the paper. Yeah, I think she owns the paper, and he is the editor. Right. And Allison is like, I totally get it. I totally get <laughs> the why you would want to leave on account of all of these horrible murders. But but <laughs> the big butt's coming a mile off here. But and then the most unlikely stupid th- like because see when you unpack what she puts forward here like my I, like my eyes rolled so far back i'm surprised they managed to roll forward for this recording um <laughs> been walking about the house two weeks blind looking like the undertaker um she basically puts forward that his story has been picked up by some outlets some national outlets and you know if there was just one more death ball just one more death you know what prime time mm-hmm Prime right. time. Now, well, let me just put it forward to you. You have a potential serial killer identified in a small town. Your articles have been picked up by larger publications. The CNN's not there. The Fox, the NMSBC, all the, all these people are not there, like at all, because none of those sh- you know shit heap reporters from the start were like you know so and so Fox News like, like right. none of that like so. And this doesn't make any sense. It makes, in fact, it makes even less sense. And to the point where it infuriated me a little bit because I was like, well, they're either like interested, they're picking up those things, but if it's identified that there's a serial killer in the small town, big news outlets are there. They are like, yeah, they, they, yeah, yeah. there's someone, someone is there. Someone is there. They're not relying on fucking butt foot, you know, bum foot backwards herald reporting on this one they send a competent journalist there to do some investigation but no no no. this is this is this is the, the and then what i love about this is how quickly he remember it's not it's not about my job i'm coming with you baby where we're going i love you i love you we're gonna do this together we're gonna drive tomorrow morning how very quickly he's like national newspapers you say mm. right call to the big time you say mm. <laughs> one more murder you say mm. it's just such a it's it, but, I don't like this character anyway. I like him less now. <laughs> and Allison is like, look, but t- I totally go take care of your wife. Yeah, totally don't, just leave. Don't even don't even worry about the opportunity. I understand you got to take care of, of yourself and your wife. And he's just like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. my wife, sure. He's like that. She's like, oh my phone's gone. What's this? CNN. All right, t- two seconds. Yeah, right. Like, hello. Oh, 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 another editor in chief. Yes, I will talk to you. One second, Dylan. You know. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't expecting this call. It's but I need to yeah. take it. Um, yeah. I need to... So Dylan goes home, and Sarah and Brenda are throwing their shit in the car. They're ready to get out. Yes, they're doing the right thing. Yeah, and so. When he shows up, he's like, hey, 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 Sarah, <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, cheeky bitch. Ah. Can I talk to you for a second? Uh, just you and me. And Brenda's like, oh, I get it. 
I'm going to yeah. go in the house and grab my cotton of smokes, give you two lovebirds <laughs> a second to figure things out. <laughs> like Brenda's going for an I told you so drink. Yeah. <laughs> she just, <laughs> which she'll have first so she can talk about how she told her so on the journey to the hotel. It's brilliant. I want a dry martini, a.k.a. gin in a glass. <laughs> and <laughs> Dylan is like, oh, baby, I'm sorry. You know Allison. You know Allison, right? And how mean you know she Allison. is. You know so Allison. Mean. And she is going to make me give her two weeks notice for for my job. So The I'm, job that you know, up until recently we thought he managed, but no, right. no, no. Two weeks notice. And Sarah's like, so you're not going? And he's like, no, baby, I'm going, just not right now. Yeah, two weeks right. or maybe less. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing. Nothing. And so Sarah's just like, all right, how about you go fuck yourself then? And <laughs> she does She does what I would do straight away. She calls Bill to the shit, boy. Yeah. And she's like, hey, mom, get out here. No, you're not driving. <laughs> So <laughs> she's still got she's got the cigarette in her mouth and the gin in her hand. She's good to drive. Absolutely. She's all I need is for you to hold my drink when I shift. <laughs> You've been doing it since you were a little girl. You know the routine. Remember when grandma used to go make you buy her cigarettes? Remember that? Yeah, you remember that. Uh, <laughs> So they take off. <laughs> so much. She's like Mama Fratelli. Have you seen scene to you where you're oh, like, was a good boy. Oh, my baby. <laughs> Mama, you've been bad. <laughs> so, so Sarah and Brenda fuck off. And Brenda immediately is like, look, I'm not saying you should get get a divorce, but if you but. did, I know a certain cop that might read your rights to you. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, oh, you mean Kev. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, no, I he's just my friend. And, and, and Brenda's like, uh-huh, friends like that you could use more of. And then this big ass pickup truck, like oversized, uh, oversized tires and shit. The, 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 the truck from Jeepers Creepers yes. makes an appearance in this show. Right. The it, truck from Jill appears. It runs him off the road. He fucking tries to watch him. Dennis Weaver is like, You can't beat me. Let me see your face, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and, Almost, almost wrecked the voice on that one, Duncan. Oh my! And oh, they oh. they get driven off the road into the woods. Brenda <laughs> though puts down her gin long enough to be like, "Hang on, honey, I put a little something in the glove box." Yeah, and like they, Brenda hasn't spilled a drop of that gin as well, like a pro. No, even running off the road, like she balances it in her hand, like you know, she, she is Eddie Murphy in the Golden Child, like yeah, to get like, that glass of water without spilling a drop. Yeah, the whole time she's, she's like, I, I, all I, I, all, I all. got the gun. <laughs> I Please. got the gin. Give me the gin. Please. But she does. She has like a, she's a big old fucking high caliber gun in the glove compartment. Yeah. Which she takes out and turns out Brenda, even with a drink in her, is a good shot. <laughs> because she has a drink in her. <laughs> Finally, her hands are steady. Steady's hands. Yeah. <laughs> so. After popping a Too couple of shots together, on. yeah. Too much time together. I've said it before. We need time apart. We need distance. We need space. Bro. We need social distancing for the the podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> so the truck takes off because they're like, "Holy shit! This drunk woman's gonna kill us!" And then Brenda and Sarah just wander through the woods for a little while, like that first Harry Potter last movie the first part of the last one where they just wander <laughs> the around the harry woods potter, for the whole fucking movie the first the first harry potter last movie yeah the first part of the last harry potter movie that's what i was trying to get out 
You know what I'm talking about? I like your version better. Whatever. And whatever, some of, some of them little wizard and shits were walking around in the woods. <laughs> yeah, the, the opening of the, the final movie starts with them orienteering in the woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to, like, figure out how to how to make a, 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 a compass out of a needle. <laughs> so. <laughs> By the way, watch Get Duped. Um, so. <laughs> They're just wandering around in the, in the woods, orienteering, as you said. Mm-hmm. And why they don't just follow the road and get a ride, yes. I don't know. Be on the road, you know what I mean? Or use a mobile phone. Right. Or the, like flag over a car that has a phone. And if the, has phones well. if the mean truck from Duel comes back, you shoot it again. You keep shooting yes, at well, it till it goes away. It turns out two shots, three shots is enough to scare the big crazy Duel van away. So let's... Right, Let's just do that instead of wandering in the woods aimlessly in a direction that we don't know for a distance that we can't comprehend for what purpose makes zero. Ah, yeah. It just is mm, still planned both. Right. And then out of nowhere, Sarah's like, this is all my fault. On account of me attempted suicide that time. <laughs> and Brenda's like, no, no, no. It's not about that. That was a real drama queen move. You didn't even take pills. You just wrote a note. No, no. It's my <laughs> fault because I'm the one who dropped that Senda block on Ada and made her a big potato. You like potatoes. And <laughs> so you wrote a suicide note. That don't impress me much. Uh, right. uh, uh, uh. <laughs> you know, so you got the pen, but you haven't got the gun. <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong. <laughs> Are you the whole song right there? Though. Are you pro suicide be- now? The beers just kicked in, boy, okay. and I'm just saying that. <laughs> when- just saying that it doesn't. If you're going to write a suicide note but not take any actions, that don't that don't impress Brenda much. I I always think Brenda of- dropped a fucking cinder block in a moving car, yeah. and crushed a woman's head. So you think she's concerned with your penned note? No, I impress her. She's seen some shit. I always think of the there. There's a line from a, a tragically hip song when somebody mm-hmm. talks about attempted su- suicide, and the line is "Nobody's interested in something you didn't do." Yeah, <laughs> it's a little cold. Also, like you, like Brenda dropped that that cinder block on that. Do you think like and she was young when she did that? Do you think that's the worst she's done or the worst she's seen? Also, she's seen some shit. Also, she lets drop in this scene. Look, I was in love with Ronnie back in the day <laughs> and I was pregnant. <laughs> yeah, it's just everything's coming out. Right. Like, like, <laughs> and, <sweet. laughs> and Sarah immediately is like, that's fucked up. You're, <laughs> you're an attempted murderer. You got to go to the police. <laughs> yeah, they've got a prison for, for, for murderers. You can sit beside Tim. The man that murdered your daughter. And Don't have to let out. Heather go, but you, you'll get your own son. <laughs> Heather's killed two people, but you killed someone decades ago. You're going in. Also, we only got to two cells. Uh, so, <laughs> Crazy Heather's back in the street again. <laughs> right. Which is coming. Holy shit. They release oh, Heather yes. into the wild, and it is just ma- mania. Yeah, they, they just let her out there, and that is not a good move. <laughs> so Sarah then just marches off deeper into the woods without her, her grandmother now. Mm-hmm. And so we leave these two knuckleheads in the woods to go to Robin, who is talking with the lawyer who is handling the estate, I think. Yeah, who is very helpful it is actually slightly helpful he but at the same time up. this is why i hate like i'm just gonna say this bo there is a special place in hell for lawyers and like financial financial institutes that that don't say no yeah and this is this is the prime example of that because turns out um this dude had more debt than we realized i remortgaged the house couple of times over, uh, made some dodgy deals, bounced some checks, had basically been living so far out of the realms of what you could afford. They are now, what was the number again? $2.8 million in debt. 
two point eight. Now, the, the the thing about this is they talk about. I think he talks about like remortgaging the house or something. It's like, yeah, he's already yeah. done that. And he goes, he goes, I goes, um, you know, I, you know, I told him not to do it, but it was still greenlit. <laughs> yeah. I told him not to, but then he said, no, I insist on making this horrible financial decision. And I was yeah, like, which, all you, right. Which, you know, I can never pay back. And also, like, I'll never make money out of, yeah, I get the property. Like, see, if you're, this is the thing. Like, banks will do this, right? And ultimately, the bank will end up with the property, right? So they yeah. repossess the property at the end of the day. But not for the sum of money they're out. Yeah, well, the, the this guy tells them, if you sell everything, yes. you, you might come close to breaking even. Yes, so like I'm sitting there thinking he has got like also I'm thinking to myself so he's two million in the hole, right? Two point two million in the hole. But and asset wise, if he sells everything, he almost has two million pounds worth. Uh, sorry, two million dollars worth of assets. That's right. That's so right. I'm like, and like, like at what point? Like at what point does? What's the guy's name again? Ronnie. No, Ronnie? No, Ronnie. Which one? Robin? Robin. Yeah. At what point does Robin, in the extravagant life that he's living in, not look around and say, you know what? feels like we've got $2 million worth of assets, and my husband doesn't appear to be doing... I'm not selling that many houses because this is a small town. You know what I mean? I'm not making yeah. that many moves and shakes in the old real estate thing. And he he does the finances for me. At what point do I think the money that's coming in equates to $2 million worth of assets? Arsehole right. is what I call this guy. Fucking he- arsehole. The lawyer's an arsehole. The fucking bank's an arsehole. Show it arseholes. So, and Robin actually Funny. asked, like, it was... Fucking rage me off. <laughs> <I>, you... <laughs> Sun's getting low, big guy. Um, so, oh. <laughs> so Rob is like, was any of this shit illegal? And, uh, the, the lawyer's like, no, no, no. It was cool. I mean, it wasn't right, but it, it wasn't, wasn't illegal. right. But it's, uh, you know, it, which once again, love that we have to make that distinction, you know, like, like it's not right. Yeah. You know, morally it's not right, but it's perfectly fucking legal. And, and so we leave that disaster to yeah. Sarah back in the woods, tromping around on alone, all, all alone. And now she's yeah. gotten scared or something. It's like, Grandma! Grandma! And <laughs> yeah. She's realized that she wants a killer beside her. <laughs> yeah, uh, how about the person with the gun? That'd be cool. <laughs> and, so, and Brenda, meanwhile, is in like a versus section of the forest where she is just spinning around a bunch, waving the gun around. Yep. She's like, she's like, um, leather face and Texas chainsaw massacre spinning this gun round. (laughs) Just, (laughs) yeah. It's somebody just, uh, and you know, well, not somebody, the, what I like to call the sex executioner just grabs her, (laughs) grabs her from behind coming out of somewhere and drags her off into the woods and Sarah hears, uh, does she like pop off in a, a shot or just screams or something? I think she pops off a shot. And so Sarah hears that and she's, oh, Fated Bogora. And she runs uh, to where she thinks she heard the shot. F- sure enough, finds the gun in the middle of the woods, which is crazy. But yeah. finds the exact spot, finds the gun. And she's yeah, like, exactly oh, where it is. he got I my mean, grandma. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so Brenda wakes up uh, in, in a boat dock with a chain on her ankle that's tied to a couple of cinder blocks oh this is so fucking dumb and the like, egg, uh, dark condom is there as well just kind of staring at her and brenda is like look i know i did some fucked up shit but <laughs> how about let he without sin cast the first stone huh huh <laughs> how about like as far eat it up You're and right. burneth the wood <laughs> and uh and dark kind of just grabs the cinder blocks and tosses them in to right. uh, how the, heavy the is a cinder block uh, well, uh, let's get let's talk physics here how heavy is a cinder block taking you know, into account that as a teenage 20, girl she managed to lift one up above her head easily to right. launch off two cinder blocks does not weigh the same as her right so like just like once again i'm all down for killing her in this fashion right but let's make it fucking plausible 
two cinder blocks does not make the same weight as Brenda as a woman. And if you push them off, even attached to her leg, it will not move you unless it weighs more than you. That's how physics works. At the worst, it's going to give her leg a bit of a, a pull. She might dislocate it from the joint, but it's not going to drag her in the fashion that it does over the docks. Plus, this is the docks. The water is never that deep at the fucking docks where the pier comes out inches from the shoreline. But, I mean, this fucking stuff drives me up. But, like, I love that, like, the thing, I, it's so dumb. It's like the setup is, like, I am, right, like, cool, like, right, well, let's do it, like, the way you want to do it, which is a smart way of doing it, like, you know, like the vengeance meets the, the act. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's... It, I love it, that, right, but let's, let's, let's tie a giant fucking boulder or an anchor or something, not two piddly little cinder blocks that, like I see, do, like, they're easy enough that he manages to push them over with ease... But yet the weight on them is enough to drag Brenda over. Fucking doesn't make a lick of sense. It is stupid. You it need, is so yes. fucking dumb. You need so more dumb. weight. Okay, so uh, a fact check from chat. Google says a standard center, center block is 35 pounds, which would presume that two are 70. And to your point, like she, mm, you need yeah. either more weight or velocity to yes, create. Like a great, yeah, a great deal of velocity or much more weight for this to drag her, <laughs> like, because she's further up there. This is not like she's right on the edge of the pier either. This drags, oh, no, no. And yeah. this, like, Clawing so the deck. Fucking, <laughs> so fucking no! dumb, man. So, I'll never so smoke dumb. again. <laughs> it just doesn't mean, it, it's just lazy. It, I understand yes, that, right. you know what I mean? Like, the, you, you die at the hands of the thing that caused the damage. I like that. I think that's, you know, that feels like from a writing, from a narrative point of view, that feels on some level, you know, satisfying. I, I imagine that narrative itch being scratched of, you know, like, like ah, yeah, it's all come full circle. At the same time, though, it has to make sense. Otherwise, like every death in this show thus far has made zero fucking sense between the rat poisoning, which like had the effect that it had the you know the woman who has her hands and legs chopped off uh with very little bloodshed like <laughs> like but still being alive to flare like, ah! yeah <laughs> Fucking me. and now this one i'm just like like give the just be a bit smarter about it just be, like it doesn't take that much like just have a like an anchor is enough right you know, but it, it like, doesn't have the off. The narrative symmetry of a cinder block. It doesn't. It doesn't. So, like, why was it a cinder block to begin with? Or why isn't there, like, five cinder blocks? Or something. Yeah. Something, that, like, a bigger cinder block. Like, a big... Something. Anything. Anything other than this. It just feels dumb. And um, maybe I'm a bit more angry about it because it kills off my favourite character from the show. She dies an unhonourable death, though. Right. She, she dies a pauper's death. <laughs> um, I also don't like, uh, or I, I, I don't like it for her because I like her, like her character, yeah. but, uh, I do kind of respect the fact that she is like this high in the water, like right there where the crown of her head is yeah. out of the water. So she like just drowns and somehow that's worse. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So while that's happening, Sarah is wandering the woods with a gun, like Lord of the Rings, only with a gun. <laughs> and she hears somebody walking close, and she's like, ho, oh, oh, ho, and just like whipping around, trying to find uh, the source of the, the noises around her in the woods. And we see the executioner, like, just like tiptoe behind her. <laughs> like, dee -dee -dee -dee. Yeah, right. <laughs> and slips off. And then Sarah hears something and starts running the other way, stumbles onto this gravel road, and then just happens to wander into the boat dock where Brenda was murdered and sees her floating in the water. And she's like, no, no, not me, grandma. <laughs> not me murdering grandma. Yeah, not that criminal. Um, <laughs> so <sighs> then, you know, an ambulance shows up. They're loading uh, Brenda up in the black bag. 
Um, no idea how any of this happened, which would have been useful because if she had a phone that she could have used earlier on, why didn't she use it? Why, if, right. You know, you know why Why were we so far in? Like, how did it... Like, don't bother with that, though. The ambulance just arrives. It's... Right. The the normal inattention to detail in Slasher the series <laughs> continues. And... Continuity, Bo. Continuity. <laughs> how, did, how did I get in touch with the ambulance? Well, I was upset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That, what do you mean? Like, they, they know. They just show up. Have you never seen? Have you never seen Minority Report? They have them in hospitals now, bro. Right. A precog saw me <laughs> here at the boat dock with my mother or grandmother, whichever. And so, Cam, of course, is there. Is just like, oh, Sarah, I'm so sorry about your grandmother, uh, and maybe mm. sometime you want to go out or something. And mm. and Sarah's like, oh. This executioner, he done fucked up. Now I'm gonna find him and kill him myself. And it's so dumb. Like she has now sworn vengeance on this on this serial killer. I mean, the, the serial killer potentially murdered, like you know, <laughs> like well, I didn't potentially murder her parents, but is like playing like that would have been the point where I would have been like, I must seek vengeance when I killed the neighbor after showing me that my mom had porno videos with her with loads of different men. And wore the outfit of the killer yeah. that killed my parents. At that point, I'd be like, vengeance is mine. I will have my revenge. No, 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 no. It's at this point that she's like, fuck it. I'm not running it. I'm not running anymore, Bo. Take me back. Right. With my dead grandmother. <laughs> I love my dead gay grandmother. And then <laughs> we see Robin going to look for Trent out in the middle of the woods. <sighs> and, and so like nobody answers the door at first so he's about to take off and then he sees kind of set off the road a little bit this shed mm -hmm. and so he goes to check out the shed and there's flies buzzing around and trent is what into what i would call like creative taxidermy much oh, like yeah, the he's... firefly family yeah he's making jackalopes he's making pigaroos he's making you know underoos some other thing yeah, <laughs> he's um, <laughs> yeah, like he's he's in there just like <laughs> fucking what? licking the carcass, cleaning sauna, just like all the things that you would have to add to say, killer. <laughs> yeah, let me killer. Let me, let me ask you a quick question about underoos, Duncan. Yes. Um, why in the fuck did they ever make Robin underoos? You know, because they were always like uh uh comic book characters or Star Wars <laughs> or shit like that. But Robin, like, are you just telling your kid that they're second best right off the bat? Like, <laughs> look, we just don't have a lot of faith that you're Batman material, even as a child. So, like, like aim aim at the middle as, as superheroes go. I mean, I would say that's a healthier way to be. <laughs> yeah, well, Overall, maybe. I think it's a healthier, healthier lesson to tell people that not everyone will be you know, a massive success. Not everyone will be, you know, the leader of a Fortune 500 company or not everyone will be the fastest person in the world, the strongest person in the world. Sometimes it is okay to be in the middle. Dream small parenting advice from Duncan McLeish. So that's right. That's right. I'm looking forward to propping up my children until they're at least 30. <laughs> so <laughs> Trent shows up, <laughs> blood literally dripping from his hands. Yep. And Robin's like, oh, Trent. Holding holding a red herring in his hand. For... Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Uh... <laughs> it is, oh my god, this show. Uh, and he he's like, sorry, I was out killing stuff, because any animal that wanders onto my land, no matter what season it is, is mine. I'm killing it. And Robin's By the way, like, have you ever read The Most Dangerous Game? <laughs> right. And Robin's like, um, I'm leaving, and Trent follows him all the way to the car, just giving him shit the entire way. And he's like, yeah. yeah, next time you come to tell me that you're not going to give me my money, yeah, yeah, how about you make an appointment? That seems a friendlier way to fuck me over, Robin. <laughs> and Robin, like, Give drives... me the fucking money, Lebowski. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Nihilus. And Robin <laughs> drives off in a, just in a terror, and Trent kind of looks menacingly off after him. And then we get one of one of the real pearls of the episode where Chief Brimley and Cam are taking Heather, mm -hmm. former 
inmate and still crazy person heather she's wearing the hannibal mask she's in a straight jacket she's on that that pulley thing <laughs> can how are your nipples um <laughs> sheriff love the suit um you know what i mean <laughs> so they just shove her out of the back seat of the this patrol car and they're like you're free to go and he, don't press charges and heather is like you know my husband's flaw was weakness in the chief yours is that you see only what you want to see and and she probably is like i ain't god damn it about we we don't point fingers besides i can't even hear you right now and she's like, that's my point. <laughs> and then she looks at Cam and she goes, I see you glowing. And Cam's like, do you see? Do you see me glowing? <laughs> and he's like, Heather, just be sure to lock your door. And then we'll <laughs> pet my tiger later. Yeah. And, and the chief is like, Look, don't worry about that crazy old broad. She is not our problem anymore, goddammit. <laughs> it's time to go catch us a killer. Not not that there's a serial killer, and it sure as hell ain't the executioner. We, I know that much. And uh, so we leave our those crack team of, mm -hmm. of law enforcement agents to uh, go to Sarah, who is just hanging out with Sonia and Ada in the room. with. Because let's know, bring this full circle like bring right. this story to a shitty end <laughs> yeah so she just shows up to fuck up their world by being mm -hmm. like oh you know i don't know if you knew this but huh, it turns out my grandma she did all of this she dropped that cement block on ava and made her a potato and sonia is like huh what but i was like <laughs> didn't you know i it felt like she well, knew. I thought that was the animosity right I thought there was like you maybe she had a suspicion, but she could never prove it. But it turns out no, well, she never knew. Right. Or she's playing like she didn't know or something. But anyway, so Sarah is like, look, what other thing? It turns out that my grandma and your husband Ronnie were together when they were kids. You know, together with yeah. with sex. And Brenda is basically just opening openly wondering, like it's your husband, Roddy, the mayor. Is he my grandfather? Yeah. And, and it's like, like you've already done them. I know you come in here with the best of intentions. You came in here to clear a, a case in the mystery that's been existing for a while. But at the same time, like we've already you've made this woman distraught. Do we now need to bring up her daughter and husband and the potential that I am your grand? I lost my grandmother, but maybe you're my step grandmother. Right. Yeah, this is just purely selfish. Like, look, I'm not going to be out no presents at Christmas. You're my new grandmother. And I, the minimum price is $50. Just so you know, I'll give you a list. It's so fucking dumb. It's so dumb. So and needless. Absolutely needless. Yeah. And Sonia is like, look, 100%, my husband is not your grandfather. Like, I, you yeah. don't, you don't have to ask that again. That is yeah. not the case. And Sarah's like... I was wondering like, it's because she doesn't have any kids, so... Right, and Sarah's like, well, I don't care. I'm going to the chief. I'm going to tell him everything. And whether or not she does, we'll see, I guess, in the next episode. Oh, I can't wait, Bo. But Sarah then <laughs> is like, hey, I need to spend a little more time with that that serial killer who's definitely not my, my pa. Oh yeah, that fucking uh. dude. When she walks in and he's like, "You out in the woods alone? How dare you, my daughter? I mean, Sarah." <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a total like, "What were you doing out there alone in the woods at night? You could have been hurt. It's, I won't allow yeah. it." Have you ever seen blood in the in the moonlight? Kind of looks black. <laughs> I imagine a pilgrim. Uh, <laughs> like, he, he wouldn't want it looks me, uh, black, like a giant black condom. I imagine a, Pringle, a pilgrim wears one when he's out murdering. Sarah. Sarah. It's just, it's just so fucking dumb. It's like you know what this is. It's like a, it's like a cross. It, all this family. Who's the parent? This person. Who's like the? It's, it's like someone has taken like the lesser plot of Scream and married it with the TV show Dallas. Yeah. 
you know yeah. what I mean? It's all family drama bullshit and fucking like and like a stupid killer murdering people in implausible ways. Is why, Bo? Why make the bad man stop? So we not only that. Here's the other one of the other big problems I think with this show is that after she's like, "Listen, I need you to help me catch the killer." And then she repeats the story of Ada and Brenda and Sonia mm-hmm. and all that stuff, which we saw at the beginning of the episode, talked about mm-hmm. in just the last scene, and are now getting the recap again. This scene should have started with him saying, and so that's what happened to Ada? Yes, you know? I don't need to hear it again. Like that, that's you, you, you bring us in after that reveal. Right, right. And so, <sighs> anyway... Uh, she's like, you know, I looked it up. The punishment for envy was drowning. And, uh, Tim Winston or whatever is like, yes, yes. Confession for you, says Sarah. You. <laughs> you could have been killed. Also, he could have killed you. And Sarah is like, <laughs> yeah, he could have killed me, but he never did. It's like he doesn't want to kill me or something. And she's like, maybe I just don't deserve to die. Maybe I'm just better than all of you. And she says, because I'm safe, because he doesn't seem to want to kill me, that's how I'm going to help catch him. He doesn't want to kill me. So I'm kind of So that means he won't kill her. Yeah, that, yeah. Well, that's how killing works. Like if a killer doesn't want to kill you, Bo, even if you're close to exposing them, they won't kill you. And, and so Tim Winston says, Sarah, I'll help you catch him. <laughs> Whoever doing, whoever's doing this is blinded by pride, and pride oh. will be their downfall. And oh. as he is doing this voiceover about, like, you know, <laughs> he's a very naughty boy, our killer. <laughs> you know, all this stuff. Uh, we see, we cut to Trent, and like you said, it is totally... The end of it's the three. gas mask. It's I'm out walking like between the yes. smack den and the house. It's such a like we we pan to Trent sitting in his fucking murder shack, like stitching up animals, and I'm like, no, no, yeah. murder shack, no. baby, murder shack. <laughs> I got me some animals. They're stuck on the wall. <laughs> There's like 15 of them. <laughs> it's yeah. like, um, it's, uh, I mean, <laughs> what, what surprises me the most about the show is how progressively dumber it's getting. You right. know what I mean? Just when you think it's it's done a, a, the stupidest thing you're going to see on this show, they drain the, the pool a little more in the next it episode. Just, it really is. It's like, I, 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 it's, it's actually shocking at how bad it is. Like, because like, it's just... It's now like going out its way to specifically, like just be like it's the it's the it's base level, right? The the movie, like the movie, the TV show operates at a base, and that base is not a sturdy base, and it doesn't it doesn't try and and every time it tries to build anything slightly on it, it falls over um, because it's not secure. And that is literally what we're doing in every episode. I I just don't, I think we're, I think we're probably right about who the killer is. And I think the problem is that this, this series has eight episodes. We're at episode three, and this is going to drag out for another four episodes before a reveal. And we're just yeah. gonna have to sit there going, no, 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 not him, no. <laughs> like, as the as we continually peel back other elements of the seven deadly sins in this fucking small town that I couldn't give a fuck about with characters I don't like because you killed and robbed me of the only character that was a joy. Um, it's just I I don't know I don't know. I'm kind it's of hoping. Bad. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping they do, like, surprise new characters where, like, episode five we get just like, oh, here's some random deputy that has been in the show all along that we just never saw before. Yeah, um, yeah, and, and he, like, when he was a kid, he stole pick and mix sweets. So, you know what's going to happen to him. Um, got a couple know, I don't... double doubles from the Tim Hortons. <laughs> I caught him, caught him shoplifting there. 
<laughs> Sorry. Um, I just Great. like <laughs> you. You've been you've been accused of of stealing a double double from the Tim Hortons. How do you plead? I plead I'm sorry. sorry. Sorry or not sorry. <laughs> Here in the great land of Canada, you you plead sorry or not sorry or or sorry by by reason of extenuating circumstances. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm not sorry by way of insanity. I was crazy for not being sorry about that. <laughs> it's just uh, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm it's I'm stupid. I'm curious. It's a it's a stupid show. And we know that, and we knew what we were letting ourselves in for, and uh, and yeah, we're just gonna have to ride this train to the end now. I'm afraid. <laughs> yeah, so that's gonna do it for this episode. <laughs> uh, we we have we have found the conclusion of episode three of Slasher. Uh, look, folks, thank you, thank you so much for uh, for hanging out. For those of you uh, watching, uh, it was great. Uh, thanks for for being here and and chatting with us. Uh, for those listening, uh, if you would like uh, to to be one of the people watching the show, uh, we're going to be off next week because uh, I got to work. Uh, but the, <laughs> the, the week after that, we should be back. And uh, check, uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram and, and Twitter uh, and, uh, and all that stuff at Legion Podcasts uh, to stay uh, uh, apprised of that schedule. And also, of course, uh, tea putts um, everywhere for the same information. Uh, Duncan. Between now yes. and the next time that we goof on this poor sad show, Slasher, <laughs> uh, where can people check out your stuff? Yeah, please do. It's podcast under the stairs, T Putts Cast, T P U T S C A S T dot com, uh, which will get you not only podcasts under the stairs, but all the additional stuff I do. You might want to be checking out Opera Omnia, which is available on the T Putts Collective, because Bo Ransdell is jumping on for the entire year. A uh, season dedicated to looking at the movies of David Fincher, and that first episode will be out by the time this episode drops. So go and listen to it. It's a great conversation that we have, just putting the building box in place before we start uh, talking about the works of um, a genuine author. So I'm, I'm very, very, very excited uh, to hear what you guys make of that. So show that some love. In the meantime, in between then, uh, I've got loads of things coming out um, from Podcast Under the Stairs, including a review and interview with the director of a witch movie that actually looks kind of amazing um called sator which has been getting all the fucking buzz it looks dark and bleak and miserable uh it took the guy who made it seven years to make and he built everything from scratch wow so that sounds yeah, cool. Yeah, like the trailer looks incredible. So that'll be dropping next week. Interview with the director, review of the movie, and various other bits and bobs. I'm having I'm having a lot of fun podcasting this year because I'm just getting to do a lot of stuff that I've been putting off for a while, uh, including uh, <laughs> doing Slasher with Bo, which is is obviously uh, a thing in, in itself that, uh, even though the show's bad, the, the fun of being here on the camera, and that's, that's kind of great. So, yeah, if you can check out that, tputzcast.com is where you will find everything. But, Ransda, what about yourself? What, what, what you got coming up? Uh, let's see. Uh, if you are watching this live, next week will be the release of um, the next, the finale, season finale of Pick Six Movies. Mm -hmm. um, we've been doing Lifetime movies, and we're capping the season with a look at the Lifetime film Murder in New Hampshire, the Pamela Smart story, uh, starring Oscar winner Helen Hunt. Uh, it Ooh, also like stars uh, Dr. Johnny Fever uh, from WKRP in Cincinnati and Dr. Giggles <laughs> himself, Larry Drake. Um, oh, dear. It Some is, weird casting. <laughs> uh, it is, like, you know, again, uh, the, the, the story is, at, at heart is, of course, a, a horrible tragedy. The movie uh, is a tragedy for entirely different reasons, and it is, <laughs> it is kind of hilarious. So we had a, a really good time talking about that. And also, just check out uh, everything going on at legionpodcasts.com, uh, where you can find, uh, you know, a lot of other shows besides the, the stuff I do. Um, I would also ask you to uh, follow us at YouTube and Twitter uh, and Twitch. 
and Instagram and all that stuff at Legion Podcasts. Uh, on on the Twitch in particular, I I didn't really answer this question from Robert about the uh, the video games because I started talking to you about your picks. Uh, so I will say uh, now as a way of synergy, brand synergy, Duncan. Um, I've been one game I would highly recommend, and I'm just about finished with is Yakuza Like a Dragon, which has been a delight to play. Oh, awesome. And uh, you can see most of that game on Twitch uh, from the streams I've done, and we're kind of in the uh, the back end of it. So you can check that out there. Um, and just, you know, a ton of shit. Like I said, other shows, we're doing more video stuff. Uh, next month in February, we'll do another list of legends, uh, and you can uh, go to, like, the YouTube or the Twitch channel and see that. Uh, yeah, I, 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 after watching that previous one you did on vampire movies, I, I, I need to get involved in one of them. You are welcome any old time. It's fun though, right? Like making yeah. making a list in real time is something that really scratches an itch I, I have. So uh, thank you. It was fun. I, I, I want to do a lot more of that stuff. I'm really, here's the thing I'm trying to, to think of is uh, a good game show because I think we could do it and I just, mm -hmm. I need the right premise and, and that kind of thing for it to for it to be good but if uh, any of the viewers or listeners have a suggestion of like hey what would be a good like a horror trivia game show let me know and uh, we might make that happen because that seems like something i want to do um at any rate there is nothing left for us to say after all that nonsense uh but to say uh duncan god damn it say good night duncan duncan god damn it say good night duncan <laughs> no that's totally wrong uh